Hello, everybody, and welcome to NECC Rainbow Six Week 5. It's hard to believe that we're yeah. already this far into the season. I am Light Rose, and joining me tonight is the wonderful Treasure. And today, we got a couple of players tonight. Ryo Grand and OMU Esports. Yes, this would be a pretty exciting one. Thank you, Light Rose. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm pumped to get in this one. And like you said, week five, we are past that halfway mark for regular season. So this is where everyone's really starting to find their spots exactly where they're going to end up in their divisions. This one specifically is the Emergence East division. So these two are sitting, Rio Grande at a 1-2 record, and CMU on the other side. The Eagles are sitting at 2-1. So not far apart at all. These guys are still middle of the pack still duking it out so it could go either way as we continue on the season for each of them there's some mystery competition up across that hill past today and then coming weeks but they have kind of slotted in there and uh rio grand definitely is gonna be looking to get back up to even in central methodist three one is where you can start peeling ahead and that's a real mm -hmm. positive win rate at that point yeah, so today, today could be a turning point for either of these teams. So we got to take a look at the rosters first. Let's look at what Rio Grande is going to be bringing to the table. They can go on up. We got Caboose, Quixie, Skyline, Quads, and I, I think the 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 banner down there is kind of covering ice and ice. Know. There it is, and now we get to see the lovely players. I don't know what it is about esports players. We see like a lot of engineers, a lot of computer science majors. It feels like that's like a core trend among rainbow six games <laughs> yeah who, who would have thought the the computer gaming kids really like their computers crazy uh, <laughs> good little consolidation i like the business management and marketing as well from the younger members of the roster these two freshmen are bringing the stonks to the rio grand roster over at cmu on the other hand we've got swolverine boosted sky grinder o2 and joe gaming Joe Gaming, what a name at that. I love that. It reminds me of those old memes of just like engineer gaming. I don't know if you remember that, but oh, yeah. memes aside, we've got some maps in play, and I think some maps that a lot of us have seen before. Oregon, Chalet, Villa, teams love going to these three maps. Yeah, you were talking about uh, kind of shuffling through these really popular play maps. And the only one that we're really missing is Clubhouse, which has actually been a, a little lacking in its representation in ACC so far this season. But Oregon never slacking off, especially since its rework some years ago. It's a big favorite. Everyone is comfortable there. So it really tests a lot of your bread and butter, a lot of that basic ability to coordinate as a team and make sure that you can clear a really well held site because those defaults are tried and true and they do hold to be. And with uh, so much time being spent on that, so many teams seeing this play, it's really pretty worked out. So it's not got a big split towards attack or defense. It really grinds down to exactly how the teams match up against each other in competition. Yeah, Chalet has really started to emerge as a more popular map in recent times. It's very viable as a defense to kind of go to any of these four sites. It's also a little attacker sided as well. So you've got a lot of redeeming qualities for them. I believe we should be starting to get into these games is Oregon, the first one, Chalet, the second one, and Villa, I think, will be a closely contested third map if we choose to get there is Oregon it's Rio it's Rio Grande's map and Rio Grande it's a uh, very very particular about how they want their school to be called but Oregon is going to be their map pick and I think this is a toss-up so far because it can be a map pick for some teams but everybody knows how to play Oregon yeah it's a little uncommon that we see anything that's really a big uh surprising change on that map so like i said a big bread and butter test between the two teams right grand having picked it pretty predictably central methodist gets the side pick and they go with the defense first so that's who we'll first see setting up maybe in that basement maybe upstairs in the dormitories but either way we're gonna run a thatcher he is still very strong even with the introduction of the impact emp grenades they're uh, something that kind of sub in for him, but there's no substitution for the real thing. And Central Methodist wants Rio Grande to have to use those substitutes. Going on to the defensive picks, I wouldn't honestly expect any surprises here. I think Mira Valkyrie are going to be the standard two bands. It's 
honestly not surprising that we see that mirror can be very strong on certain sites especially bar gaming if you can play her right on that basement site she can just slot right in there nicely and as the second starts to tick down it will be mozzy oh. so that is a radical change so that will let valkyrie and kaid through and i feel like that has to be you, you only go for operators like that when you're target banning but yeah, and Mozzie has really fallen off from heavy play for some time now. I mean, he does have good guns, and that P10 Roni has uh, made some crazy waves in its own times. It's got its own peaks of play, but we're, we're seeing a bit of a focus on some other kind of sidelined characters in a lot of rosters. I mean, that Rook, we, we've been talking about him a bit because uh, next season, Escalade going to see him getting a huge boost, funny enough, seeing as boosted is the one playing him right now so that speaks to uh wanting to avoid some grenades from below they have been nerfed uh relatively recently so they're not as good as those like depth charges thrown down from below but second floor is always vulnerable to them so having some armor to stop the shrapnel does help yeah and uh i i'm a little bit of a fan of rook i've made it known definitely throughout broadcast that he's Coming just uh oh we're, we're having a little bit of teleport around. <laughs> I don't know if it's server issues. Yeah, but uh, Rook is so enjoyable with the MP5. He's still got that two times on it. He's able to boost up his teammates' health, which can be helpful in scenarios, especially if a team wants to take a lot of gunfights that may not exactly end in you know, death on either side, but if you just constantly pepper away at a team, the Rook armor will give you the benefit. And I believe, yes, because we are on the new patch... It will give withstand. I I don't know confirmation for sure, but considering we had the new patch go live, I think Rook will have actually withstand on his armor. Yes, that might be a big significant boon here for the defense. Right now we're signing up for a master bedroom side take in the larger part, but uh, two players going over there towards Big Tower, gonna pressure from that side. Uh, I'm not sure what they have for hard breach available to them. That's kind of a couple split pushers, but maybe they're getting everything prepped that way they can rotate their uh, ace over there as soon as they get master bedroom wall open. Yeah, Rotera there is gonna uh, make some explosions there. I'm not sure exactly what it's getting rid of, but they have already cleared into bedroom and they, there's no defenders here. So it's actually gonna be pretty free for the attackers to take this ground right now. I believe there was a maestro cam in the walk-in closet or a banshee. There, that was the, uh, that's what the Rotero drone was clearing out. And we haven't mentioned what maestro, what gun he's bringing to the table. He oh, has yeah. the, all the, in, actually not the all the in hand, but Sky off camera takes out Quixie. So you lose frag grenades, you lose Nook, but there's an immediate refrag onto Wolverine. There isn't confirmation yet, as I, I might have mentioned earlier, with Stand. There it is. Yeah, that is absolutely huge. Having another gun on the block still with a player down on the attack is really substantial. The Ace still has not managed to get some hard breach over into Attic, so Grinder's still pretty safe over there with his long range shotgun boost. Oh, gets a kill, followed back to back with Sky taking out uh, Ski Line. So it's just one attacker left as Swalverine takes another one as well. These MP5s have been singing true Kaboost only player here just trying to push his way and sees the head there for a second but doesn't quite hit the mark and that slug hitting hard right in the shoulders takes a couple before they find their mark no oh, and it, it has it is one of the only other uh two times scope besides yeah. rook's mp5 so method is bringing something different to the table right off the bat new patch already has impacted this round because wolverine was able to stay alive and actually pepper this attack enough to get a kill so anything that method is you know any progress that they try to get immediately pushed back by the fact that they brought a rook so this could be an impactful okay, operator in this match potentially in this entire meta we might have seen the emergence of it's french the, the the rook himself could be could be french time could be french time time will tell as we propel on through these but this is gonna be a tanky tanky defensive lineup i mean no one below two armor and with that boosted extra armor from rook they were gonna be taking a lot of hits they were having the forefront on all the fights that they've had so far they're really picking up their gunfights well before Ryo Grand was really capable of finding the heads or anything, but if they're not finding heads, it's going to take a lot of rounds to take away these defenders. They're setting up, uh, I think, pretty default across the board. Those guys getting prepped over there to play into Bunker. Got a Mute Jammer to play with, as well as that shield, and an open wall into Freezer to watch attackers who come down through there. 
Speaking of the attackers, I want to know what the plan is. What the what is going to happen to actually counter, you know, these maestro cams, these tanky as hell Methodist players? As right now, the, the goal isn't strategy; it's trying to catch any any of these defenders who are trying to rotate back. And unfortunately, they just weren't able to catch anybody. But you can see they are prepped. They are ready to already try to get this shield burned out. Try to push on forward as the smoke canister will deter them for the time being but not very long there's going to be a lot of damage on both sides Riot Grand and Methodist taking some damage is so nice now has actually moved past bunker and has an angle on pillar but has been caught out by that maestro cam takes a lot of damage for it. just look at what this camera is able to do it is going to give Methodist the information it gives Wolverine the info to actually get the kill as well and Methodist, they've reinforced the walls. So this has been a very efficient defense for them. It hasn't wasted a lot of time, but it's netted them a kill and a lot of utility. There we go. That camera absolutely had to be gotten rid of. So uh, Ryle Grant did their due diligence, burning out those flashes, ooh, using those flashes to burn out the ADSs and get the smoke off of that corner. But that's not everything that needs to be done here in Bunker, especially if you're putting five players there. Ooh, another kill from Sky here who hasn't quite given up all that ground as Wolverine picks up a third one to boot. See, Waz is now all alone out here, all but lost on the round. I mean, Diffuser is down right through there, taking an off angle. is going to take a lot of time, but... They do have it available right now, minute 19 on the clock. This is a all eggs in one basket kind of scenario, right, Layros? Yeah, I see why it's kind of stuck outside. Everybody knows this position, but it, something big is Methodist will now have two flawless rounds in a row. And I think at this point, it is a flawless round, even if c Wads picks up a kill, which they will. This, this round is still 100% favored towards Methodist. It might as well be a flawless round with how efficiently they've just been able to dominate the defensive side, able to shut down the attack. And a lot of it comes down to just Ryo Grand. They haven't been able to actually deal with what Methodist is bringing to the table, but Seawads does take out two. But uh, I say that as if Withstand is not on the table. Skies will get back up immediately. Drop back down by Seawads, who uh, they don't have the Rook armor. They don't have the tanky HP that Wolverine has that have actually been able to keep them alive so far. They're going to run through the Ash Breach, try to stay alive for the time being, but... It's not going to last very long as Wolverine has already made their presence known in this game. Absolutely. Pick up four for the round just shy of the ace. In fact, doing a great job holding up on Pillar, but a lot of that was fed right to him. And those rug plates making more and more impact. Well, uh, Wolverine would not have still been up through that first gunfight if it were not for the additional HP actually benefited by that gadget. So once again, this one is not going to be a flawless back-to-back, -back, but it basically looked it by the time the impactful plays of the Academy round had ended. And defuse as many bombs as they can. So this is probably the best chance that Ryo Grand has at winning a map because uh, kitchen dining is probably the most attacker sided map. It's an interesting choice of Methodist to actually go to this site rather than meeting dining. But I think something about this site is it leaves a lot of open sight lines. That wall will get opened up in small tower very easily, as uh, I would say with the thermite. But so far, so nice is actually keeping on the ace. We'll have to see. Okay, they will swap over. But uh, it, something about this site is it gives long sight lines. You've got uh, the site towards green hallway. You've got uh, kitchen towards the small tower itself. And right now, Methodist is dominating these gunfights to so look at Ryo Grand only two kills on the board and that was Seawatt in the last round just picking up some consolation kills yeah and actually the crazy thing is as far as optics go Ryo Grand actually doesn't have ones that are super advantageous for these long range fights and those two times uh, still stuck on their grinder and boosted both running the mp5 and oh and the slug shotgun there's wolverine picks up another one that's five uninterrupted kills since his last death i don't know he's not even died for the game so six uninterrupted kills so far that peak they're gonna take out caboose and taking out a lot of that fragment potential and intel that is lost with yana going down that's an infinite number of drones theoretically i guess like four of them uh if you're maxing them out throughout the round but a really useful player to have and boost is hiding upstairs as well looking for an opportunity to pick up kills and he's just two rooms away from these attackers looking to try and get some vertical control over the kitchen yep there's one down and no one to get that refrag 
Riot Grand just don't have the information. Boosted will be caught out, but the attack has lost two players. And so far, you're going to have really nothing for the roam. You have some Claymores in Siwan's pocket who hasn't been able to deploy them. You've got four drones, but those are really going to be have to use for offensive information to allow Riot Grand to actually push onto this site. So already for the third round in a row, they are on the losing end of things. They get open this meeting uh, hatch, but honestly, that's step one because this site is not meeting in this kitchen dining. Yeah, that'll get them a little bit closer to their goal, but I don't think that, uh, I think that leaves both hard breaches used. That's two hatches opened, but that should be the rest of the hard breach that's available. No, no, I guess uh, one is still remaining. So one of these was not reinforced, actually opened up with soft destruction. I think the ash charge, yeah. Uh, moving down green hallway here. Grinder's going to be the first one to be pulling up. He's got a nice long angle down here. Going to try and just pre-fire that or at least open up a little sight line after hearing some sounds of the other players or maybe picking something up on cameras. There are a couple players uh, or a player dead for the defense to be keeping up the cam work. But the defense is pretty well aware of what's coming from Ryo Grand next. And with 30 seconds left, that meeting wall will be opened up as the frag grenade clears out. Just any utility left. As now Methodist, they have to back into the dining hall, and they have time on their clock. That's the fifth man in their scenario, you could say. As now there's going to be a lot of push onto the site, but there isn't any smoke canisters that can actually push Ryo Grand out of this situation. And Nice will be able to put the diffuser down. This swings the round in such a massive way as Quixie doesn't get the second and Grinder's able to clean that one up. We're at a 2v2 as will the Rook armor come in handy as Joe Gaming is now all alone in the 1v2. They have the MP5K, but they get down, they get taken out, and there goes CMU. It looked like they wouldn't pull it out after those first two deaths, but they come together in that last 30 seconds, stick that diffuser down, and come away with the W. That's actually a huge monument to Quixie there and a huge blunder from the defense CMU. They had to do something to respond to that hard breach going off. You know that that's a plantable spot right behind the boxes. And you actually have some lines of sight that were really close, but everybody pulled off and allowed that to go down. And suddenly that's a really, really strong position for the attackers. They've lined up one player in green hallway and two on either side of the diffuser in meeting hall. That either takes a full wide flank all the way to the behind uh, meeting hall or just pushing up into this triple line of sight hallway, which is just not doable. You can't push into that. It's such a stalwart hold and with no calls for a quick rotate. The defense was just totally caught out by that diffuse going down. Yeah, I think uh, the, the lack of a smoke is probably what hurt that team. We yep. usually see him being brought on most of the sites here, but it seems that Methodist, they're opting to keep the Rook in play. They were wanting to go for a lot more uh, utility drain and information operators is they're still keeping with a lot of their core uh lineup, but instead they are bringing a form of plant and I'll not the smoke. However, it is going to be an Echo, so a non-traditional operator being brought to the table. However, he still has, you know, you plant an aisle, like I said, and he still has that deployable shield, which is very important when we go up to the second floor. Yeah, interestingly, we've also brought that uh, Kaid, which you noted was not banned earlier on. Yeah, there we go. That's a moment. You can tell. Kabooster went, wait a <laughs> second, there could be someone in the closet. We got to double check for that. Uh, a C4 also pinged out, so they know that that's a bit of a worry down below but now the shield is free to move on up clear up some ground and sees that everything is electrified is a bit of a different push from the attack obviously the addition of our shield from osa but also a little bit multi-angled compared to our last attack two players out on big window osa moving up through master bedroom and two more coming up to cover him oh but a quick moment trying to shoot out that drone and sky picks up the head takes out quixie who was the mvp for last round gone off the board is that a trade that is viable in the end? Methodists lose a lot of information, and they lose a form of plant denial. But there goes Quixie. There goes your top fragger, and like you said, MVP of the last round. When Ryle Grand were really pushing things in this round, they were already setting up a pseudo form of an execution with about a minute into the round. And now if we reach the halfway point, they have stopped. 
we've we kind of hit the pause button on things things have quieted and now raya they're gonna have to drone things out maybe set up more talent shields that's exactly what caboost is gonna do they want one more i think one more kill from raya ran could be the opener but one death could be the nail in the coffin for the attack yeah, none of these entry points are quite secure. Master being opened up, it does require, I think, a vault even for a crouch play. They can't quite walk in through those, and they know that they have a player watching it. Grinder has been just staring at it with the little magnum, looking for any heads to pop up, and he's got a shield with that little window in it to watch through. Yeah, Rotate coming out here for the defense. Sky needs to get somewhere a little bit safer with such low HP. He's a prime candidate for that first pick for the offense. Well, the execution phase is where Ryo Grand really found success, but they don't really have a decent position that they can actually put this diffuser down. Grinder has such an angle onto the site itself that Nice just cannot do anything and eventually is taken out in that games area. It leaves Caboose all alone on the game's window and all four members just aimed at his position. Finding one and with two players on about 20 to 10 HP, this is... Uh, maybe achievable treasure as long as Methodist doesn't take, team, take things too aggressive as long as they are not honestly stupid right now this should be their round and I think that's exactly what's going to happen the PDW will run out of ammunition and so will Caboose's chances they have gone down to zero that's interesting. Grinder was actually playing a little bit of a different shield. It's not like a weird place. There's a lot of spots you could put a deployable shield there, but right in the doorway, you don't see as commonly. And that was the perfect position for this very uh, westbound focused attack. The window was basically made useless, and so was that hole in master bedroom wall because there was a full flush shield facing that and a player who's just gonna play patiently on it. He wasn't over peaking or anything. He wasn't playing to lose. He was playing to grind down that team very fittingly. And that's exactly what they needed, especially exactly with window being a hard point to get into unless you have a really successful other line of attack. So we needed something on attic to deal with this defense and it just never came from Rio Grande and they lost their players one by one without a concerted execute. Just players going in one by one. That was actually a story on this side as well. The kind of rush strategy a little bit when they saw the double door was open, when they uh, droned out those ADSs in the shield, they broke those. They tried going in, but they were so split that Ryo Grand, they just could not do anything about Wolverine on the pillar, the 4K. This is where we saw it in the last time. I don't think we're going to see something that similar as there are some changes on the attacking side. Zero is probably going to be the biggest change, and that will shut down a lot of Rome presence if Rio Grande actually uses those correctly. If Methodists, if they swerve their way around that, it really isn't going to make a big deal in the end. But we're going to have to see if Rio Grande if a 4-2 split is going to be the best that they're going to get, or a 3-3 is still on the horizon. I have to say, we haven't seen that much of a roam presence. A boosted is upstairs, so it might actually come in handy this time, but it's only been shown before on the dining objective earlier, but with a vertical approach like this, it means that Ryle Grand is probably looking to open up, we use those can openers. Ooh, the hard breach charges to open up the hatches down below. Boosted, though, is lying in waiting with no drone ahead of Quixie. That's just a player going down. You gotta have your support players join up your entries to give them information that they can directly act on, since Intel is only going to be be good for a couple seconds after it's actually gathered so without that they know that there's a player in here boost is just waiting for the opportunity yeah someone going in to go for him caboose doesn't quite make it though as boosted has a better angle i can just slink back into a further corner here and keep laying on the threat and honestly, Ryo Grand is doing about the driest clear they can, throwing one player after another at this rook. No drones, no utility at all to kind of pressure him away. Just good old-fashioned bullets. And honestly, in this battle, they definitely lost. Didn't even take away a third of Rook's health. He is a tanky operator, but that still is something that the attack should have worked on better because now they have one set of frag grenade or one set of hard breach charges gone and almost lost a set of frag grenades had boosted actually hit their shots and dangerously close right there to losing them but Seawatts will win out that fight the maestro is going to be gone and so is that slug shotgun 
That's going to be big too. That's part of the plant denial gone, and the plant has been the one way that Ryo Grant has found around so far. A peek from Joe Gaming isn't going to be quite what he's looking for. He loses a lot of health because there's a lot of players staring down this freezer corridor, but this means that Ryo Grant is pretty stacked up and boosted. Looking for another flank could be absolutely humongous for the defense. They do have drones on the uh, flank though, and they do see him. Pink comes up, and two players move over to find him, and they are actually trapped now. Ryo Grant doesn't have an option to leave and rotate. They just have to move forward through these smokes and get through the barbed wire. And there's gunfights beyond that point, so Methodist is just looking very comfortable, sitting in sight and waiting for the attack to come to them. Hey, it's kind of been a repetition so far between these two teams that Ryo Grant struggles to get rid of the defensive utility. CMU just waits until those last 30 to 15 seconds, and then they take out this Ryo Grand team. It's been time after time after time again, and it's allowed them to net three or four rounds. I think around three have been decided by what I just said. Maybe one of them were, you know, see him just being the better team. But now going back down to kitchen dining, one crucial change. And I think this should be a 5-1, and that is that one tiny little box plant. Attackers need to locate and defuse bombs. Yeah, I think there's no way that is going to be totally ignored by the defense. Grinder is actually switching to a different camera operator this time, Bob having played only the heavier ones. Now on Valkyrie, it's actually a really notable character to have available. They've won four rounds so far without her benefit, but Valkyrie is so strong. It's such free utility, a free uh, intel that you can put wherever you want, and it's pretty hard to clear unless it's in a real default position. And even just the audio, if you hire really well, can do a lot to help a team out. Ten seconds to insertion. I, mean, I don't know if I like the lack of plans and out. C4s seconds, yeah. are the only thing that Methodist has, but that requires actually pushing up into the site because it's what's called a heavy throw in the game. You're not going to be able to really heft it that far like you are yeah, with something... Yeah, like a smoke canister. Smoke has those beefy arms. He's able to chuck those canisters a long distance, and that's not here. There isn't an echo either. So I think the plan is just keep Rio Grande away from that wall. Keep them away from actually opening it up, putting down the diffuser, and there is success. As now, Quixie is not going to be on Yana anymore they're gonna be on sledges right now they've just kind of run they just kind of ran at the enemy these past couple rounds and that has really been a failure they've been the opening death i believe in three of these six rounds so something needed to change for that and an operating change might be the solution yeah, and that's a real shame to be seeing on a player who can definitely make the frags happen when they just get into some raw gunfights, as we've already seen. Finally, a uh, pretty clean Ryle Grand clear the top floor. They have slowed things down a lot, especially after last round, where it was made clear that they need to do so. And now we have to see what they're going to do with them once they've gotten it. Boosted is getting out of here. He knows that they know that he's hidden up there before so it's not a good place to be explosives already coming out as well but the rail grand attack is actually really well suited for upwards pressure and that's where the c4s are going to come into play first before we even get down to a plant quickly trying to see if they can catch anybody on that first floor but as we can see methodist is just kind of separating themselves from this vertical play playing under construction playing under indestructible surfaces there's no damage going to be done to anybody and boosted is going to be dropped the rate of fire on that l85 was enough to drop the rook and now it gives the advantage to ryo grand it's the first time that this has happened this entire match that methodist has actually been the first death and again Engagement right be, might be around the corner, but off screen, there's one between skill and sky. So Methodist, it seems that kitchen just might not be their site. It's going to have to take a, a couple of bullets from anybody, but nobody is their Ryo. Pick up a flawless round on the last round of their attack. I love that. That was actually a perfect address of all of the problems that they've had that lost them some stupid rounds earlier. They're not stacking up on each other. They're watching different unique angles that actually contribute and add to each other. And they're not rushing in all on the same angle. They're moving at the same time and they're moving on different angles and keeping really well and communicative. That is exactly what we want to see. And that just calls out all of the bad habits that Central Methodist has been allowing to let fly because they don't feel challenged on their defense. No, a side swap. And what 
I, I think Rio Grande, I think they definitely have something that can be brought to the table that can actually net them a victory. It, I need to see what it is, though, on the defensive side, because there are some transferable skills, I think, between the two sites or two sides. Excuse me. Yep. I, I don't truly know what they are, what Rio Grande's strength and weaknesses are, because we haven't truly really seen them at their best so far, Trevor. Well, at the very least, the ability to adapt as they move along here. Yep, that's that's found. So we're moving that Valkyrie, Kimmer. <laughs> They're bringing out the Valkyrie themselves from the beginning here. I think that's a great move. She adds a lot, especially here in basement and second floor, where you can just watch the enemies approach and some spots you can put it, like in bunker, which gives you some great eyes and can be hard to spot with all of the props that are down there. But this IQ being up here means that Central Methodist has noticed the Valkyrie, they know that she's on the board, and they're happy to bring out a nice AUG in order to just get some firepower in Swolverine's hand. So that's going to be a comfortable one to the player who's sitting right now at 8-2 and two with a 4.0 KD so far in the match. Well, sitting pretty on the IQ, and I think IQ's job is really just going to be to root out the Vigil who he's got, and the Valkyrie! IQ is so efficient with Mute now gone, and those, that that northern side is a graveyard for Ryo Grand Caboose and Seawad's left. I am honestly a little confused just how quickly the defense fell in shambles. Now with Boosted pushing through Freezer, there's another part of the map that the defense just could not hold on to. And Seawads isn't actually on the site. Seawads is on that first floor. And I think now is the time to potentially return to the site, my friend. You are the only one left alive. And they're going to go back to Freezer a little too late to get anybody on Methodist rotating through there. As now they have been caught out. And I think their death could potentially be right around the corner. As the Diffuser will get put down. Down, Joe will be dropped on the floor and so will Boosted. So Seawatts haven't taken a lick of damage and just a little bit of damage needs to be done to both Wolverine and Grinder. but it's just this Methodist squad. They have the upper advantage on Ryle Grand and they win the round. That's a storm of an attack over peaks over by Pillar from the defense. Ryle Grand allowed two of theirs to fall while that Nook splits down through basement into freezer really quickly boosted picks up one for himself and then a second once this basically over with the 2v5 is nigh unwinnable especially since seawads is off uh, in another world at that point of just about like effectively he's not going to get back to site in any exactly. way that matters unless his teammate were to pull off a miracle and just slow them down with smokes and grab a couple headshots with smg 11 but that's not going to happen and central methodist is continuing to cruise along even after losing that flawless round just a moment ago Bomb located oh, by I think attack. now we're starting to see a little bit of a gap between the two teams that Methodist, they still have good control over the map, despite, you know, the, the changing of the guard, the changing of the sides, despite having to do a little bit of a mentality change, because there is a fundamental difference, believe it or not, between the defense and the attack, and especially how the game is actually paced itself. Usually the attackers kind of have to push at the defenders. They can make the pace, but it, it's kind of a ebb and flow between the two. And a lot of times it's the attack that really dictates how the round can be played. Yep, absolutely. So Methodist are speeding that last round up, putting it at the pace that they knew would put Ryle Grand offset. They weren't ready for it and they get to win off of it, but I don't think this the precedent has been set now. So I don't know if Ryle Grand would fall for the same thing. And thus I expect Central Methodist to slow down their play and make sure that they're really sufficiently droning everything out. Already Boosted knows that he's got a player he's staring at down the hallway, but Looks like Quixie has made his exit. Yep, he's no longer there, but Seawatt's still out here looking to make more and more solo plays just like we've been seeing from him across this map so far. And Boosted shut down before you can sneak and kill someone from behind. Unfortunately, just the lack of a droning is going to hurt Boosted and the lack of really any ADSs in nice position. Any magnets are definitely going to hurt them. Akiba Barrier is just going to be too late to provide an, an angle for Caboose to actually shoot at this team. As now that wall is going to be open. Caboose tries to peek and gets heavily punished for it. Ryo Grand, there is only one member on site, one defender 
and it is Ski, both Quixie and Seawoods are actually off the site, and now they have to return because, like I said, the one defender is gone. Sky will be able to put this diffuser down because Quixie just cannot peek through the smoke. There's going to be no bullets actually hitting any bodies through that smoke, so now there's about 35 seconds for Ryo Grand to really work their magic here. A 2v4. A lot of full health members, but Seawoods starts it off with a bang. Wolverine cannot hit the shots, and now we're all equal up, but Seawoods Seawatts gives the advantage to Ryo Grand, leaves Grinder in the 1v2. The Blackbeard might be advantageous, doesn't give them the win. It does not! It breaks at the last second, and Seawatts is able to defuse that diffuser. And now we're going to see Ryo Grand make it 3 to 5. Wow. <laughs> that one really just coming from the brink of nowhere some great shooting from seawatts but it's got to be the hero plays that, that get them out of such a deep hole that they were put into after losing all of their presence on site it's the roamers that need to be coming back a little bit earlier for rio grand that's really plaguing their defense uh, you're putting your your fraggers out on those feelers those tentacles for the defense looking to see where the attacks can be coming from but as soon as it's not where you are right now, you need to be getting back to the site. That way you can bring that gun skill to the team before they're all gone. It doesn't have to be a 1v4 clutch. That way it can just be a, a 5v5 win out. So now, interesting to know, I believe both times that CMU have been the opening death, they have lost the round. In the last round, Boosted was the first casualty in the sixth round. Boosted was the, or, yeah, the sixth round. Boosted was the first casualty. And those have been rounds that Rio Grande is able to be in win. Round three? Yeah, seconds to go. We ignore round three because that doesn't fit my narrative structure. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> I love that, actually. That's just perfect. Uh, and I'll, I'll go along with it fully. We're back on basement though this way they lost really heavily uh Busa came down with the realm through basement through basement or the flank through basement he's not doing the same thing at all very different roster coming up from central methodist so they're not looking to blitz their way into sight take those three kills in the first 30 seconds and then just win out they're gonna take a more slow and measured approach they've got a lot of throwables between kappa tau technically not throwables but is close enough and the yang candela so this means they are probably looking to continue this pressure that they already have through bunker and just clear some of these strong sight lines by pillar and the choke points that lead into the long hallway and into objective itself uh and they're posturing for that with a flank from boosted up top uh still flank but with different utility we're not seeing an explosive start by CMU, but that doesn't mean that they're dormant for now. It doesn't mean that they're quiet. It just means that right now, they're just being a little patient. A lot of Sky's Roteros are either being jammed or shot. So already, a good takedown of utility by Ryo Grand without really having to do much. The Mew Jammer should get taken out by Wolverine's bullets. And now that will allow uh, Capital or Thermite, depending on whoever they choose, to actually open it up, give an angle. As it will be Thermite, Capital does have those secondary hard breach and capital is going to have to make some work they get one but can get the second seawans doesn't take a lick of damage as the roamer is still around the map hunting and waiting so we're at an equal four to four but there is ski line not using the maestro slug shotgun but this time using the tcsg with caboose following in suit as uh C cmu they they're not quiet right now they're going to start firing back but just the 2v3 ryan grand they're going to start swarming back yes he was here in the freezer holding another line of sight towards pillar really great place to be especially since they already know that's where joe's coming from after that last kill that he just netted and uh, see was picking up a really big one taking out boost in that flank potential by kind of doubling up on roamers here oh no grinder pushing up way too soon right into caboose he's gonna happily take him out joe's left all alone firing into the freezer it's not gonna work out though because see was is there and on a roll yeah, Seawatts has really started to pick it up in these couple rounds. I mean, they I might actually have the most kills in the game so far between these two, potentially even beating out Wolverine, who has been a little bit softened since we've swapped sides. They just haven't been as prevalent in the kill feed as right now, meeting Hall Kitchen. 
CMU was unable to get a victory on this site, and they're hoping that Rio Grande is going to be the same. It actually isn't uh, dining kitchen, it's meeting kitchen, which is similar, but is still a fundamentally different side, I believe, and how it is attacked, simply because that meeting double wall is so strong, and it's such a power position that once it's opened up, a lot of the defense has to push back. So the attic is a generally, uh, it's a position that generally needs to be hold, but I don't think it's a horrible decision if they don't hold it with the strength of a fortress. Yeah, well, I think with that hatch being open directly above A site that we've been uh, getting some good views of, it's going to be important to hold up here. And Quixie already putting up a rotate here, two players upstairs on second floor. They're going to be watching this area and watching for a blitz that the uh, Attackers could use to just drop directly in. Once again, they're bringing Grinder on the Blackbeard. They find an excuse now that he's got the impact EMPs. He's using those to help Sky open up some more walls as well. But right now, he is uh, going down a slightly different angle from the rest of his team. Open up Big Tower. And little does he know, Quixie's just right through that wall, just a few feet away. See what's holding an armory still. The assistance of droning might help, but I think Jaeger's head might have been yeah, spotted for a brief second. As now firebolts will actually be spread out, but just aren't big enough to actually put Siwads out of armory. And now Boosted is going to be punished for not recognizing that Quixie is in the attic side. Siwads is not alone as Ryo Grand. They have learned from their mistakes just a little bit, or especially on the Rome game. They are going along with the buddy system, which is a key factor in having an efficient Rome. Yeah, it allows you to get a refrag, but it is a big investment of resources. Bullets coming out there will give the perfect location of Swole Vrain. He's taken off the board by Quixie, who sees those gunshots going towards C. Watts, who's able to stay safe on another angle. Kill the will find Quixie. It's that refrag from Joe on the window. So things are still nice and spicy upstairs. He's pushed his way into Attic, and he's waiting to see, since they do know there's two players up here, to find another one. Uh, uh, in an unfortunate position, Fuse doesn't really have much to do in this situation. As pushing any forward, there's just another line of sight that Ryo Grand can use, but Grinder on the actual site themselves, they are going to take out a player inside of that. So Kishin is a little bit free for the taking. Green Hall is going to be pushed up, and Skill Line just makes that TCSG 12 sink. Making it work a lot is now, oh, no. um, well, Rest in you gotta peace, res res respect it a little bit. Yeah, it looks like he's ready to move on to the next round. He's not in the building at all. He's not got any teammates, and there's still three left inside. It's going to take uh, 45 seconds to even get into a place where he could start a gunfight. And there's still more intel for the defenders that he's going to have available. So we move our way on up. And Ryo Grant has done exactly what they needed to do on this half. And they have evened up the score count. It's 5-5 five, five now as we're getting closer to the end of the second half. So a, a very radical change from this first half. Three rounds in a row that Ryo Grand have been able to put together. And I think it's just due to the fact that they're playing a lot more centralized with each other and they're just simply winning their one. Methodist are struggling a little bit when it comes to the, their gun skill. Yeah, it's really interesting to see because I felt like they were just the the better shooters in the first couple rounds, especially off the back of that flawless to open up the entire match. But squaring up against each other for a longer time, Ryo Grand is starting to feel more and more comfortable. They're on a better objective now too. They were able to have, able to have a really nice win just now on meeting their tertiary objective. And now back up to second floor, one that they're a lot more comfortable on. The first one that they've won on defense as well. This is the best what they could be in. Absolutely. I think you, now you get the cycle, you get places where you really felt confident going here before, and you put the fear of Seawatts and the fear of Quixie in the attacking side. As Seawatts actually isn't in armory, they're over by that uh, freezer stairs area. So you can just see the hesitancy from yeah. the attacking side. There's nobody there, but they don't know that for sure, and they are just. It, there's a lot of apprehensive movement coming out from them. 
Yeah, some time is going to have to be spent sending a drone in through there. They're already pinging it, so we know that Boosted is waiting for his teammates to drone up there. But c -Wads is deadly somewhere else. Eh, he's probably not going to find any value for a low while. He's going to have to rotate back later since no pressures come from Freezer Stairs. Uh, the attack is also pushed up to try and watch the big window. Skyline held up here with his teammate in B site. So a little bit stacked up for the defense other than the roamers, which might be a bit of a problem once this execute comes down because the attack has done a really good job of spreading their site lines and getting ready for this execute grinder the black that has been a stable part of this attacking roster so grinder actually has a lack of utility really is like the vigil of the attacking side but probably worse so we'll have to see if blackbeard actually gets anything done because in the 1v1 didn't help grinder has been able to push forward but i just think that's because the defense just aren't expecting them as sky is now going to open an avenue towards this attic side give a different source of attack for cmu as they have a lot of time on the clock to drone out to hopefully get an entry but i think it's very easy to just waste the time all right, Boosted has expended most of his capital. Ooh, utility, and that's going to do a great job. That's actually zoned off anyone that could pull up and stop himself and Swolverine for pushing in. But Quixie with the quick scope, there's going to find his kill, find another down as well. That's going to clean up the attack on that side, and suddenly it's going to be reliant on the attic players. But no, Grinder can't just outshoot Caboose with his SMG 11, and we have down to one player left. Joke does have the adrenal surge to bring Sky back up, but it's just going to be up and down for him like a roller coaster as Joe is left all alone he sees an angle that gunfire is coming from but even with his overstim he's got a big task to deal with right now damage done too nice through the wall as joe just isn't quick on the reflexes so now ryo grand storming back gets a four round streak and they are on map point on their own map pick i think this was a little surprising considering where we were at round seven five to two but like, like I'm saying, that four-round stream, they have really strung it together, and it has, honestly, it hasn't been close in most of these rounds. They have felt like they've been in control the entire time. Yeah, it has been a sweeping half, especially that, that round one, I, I had that complaint. I was like, you need your fragging players to be getting back to site sooner. We need faster rotates to be addressing our fights that we need, especially Seawads, who was up there on top of the scoreboard, very number one. 14 and 5, absolutely running away with so many rounds. And once we get him in the rotation a little bit better, he's a monster bringing us up to the first match point of this match. And they get another round on defense too with 4 2 halves going both ways. Well, 4 1 half on this one. This is an easy place for Ryo Grant to just pop one round in and get themselves out. So now as the timeout comes to a close, we hope that, uh, or at least CMU hopes, that they can gain something from it. As basement site will be the last site that we go to before the overtime clock has started to tick. As uh, it wasn't the best round for CMU. They were very slow, and Rio Grande, once the walls started to get open, once the execution actually started to follow through, the defense was absolutely ready. They just ripped apart the attacking squad. And that can't happen because this is map point. Rio Grande would win their own map and we would be heading to Shallot. The same thing will happen. But the same strategy isn't going to be exactly in play as uh, we've seen it on CMU's side. As Rio Grande, they go for a little bit of a different play. They like to reinforce that double wall. You know, statistically speaking, this is the best place to attack for Central Methodist right now. This is the only objective that they've won on so far. And I'm actually really curious to see, uh, we see Skyline there reinforcing to right there on E-Box. The left to him, though, was not reinforced last time, not allowed. Uh, Central Methodist to actually really quickly shoot out the mute uh, gadget that was right through that wall and allowed them to move up a lot faster, get the hard breach off. And they actually had one hard breach or hard reinforcement still left in the pockets through the action phase. I didn't get a chance to mention it, but I was like, that would have saved them even a little bit more time or at least made it really exposed for the attacker to move up and try and shoot it out. Just waiting so far between these two teams. Quixie up on the top floor isn't 
too much of a surprise. Neither is Seawads, and that frag grenade will actually miss from boost. It's going to sail over the bunks, cooked long enough. There goes Quixie. It is just a duel between these two players. It's either boost and killing Quixie for the opening kill, or it's Quixie killing Boosted, but now that clears some part of that second floor. That will allow c to actually have to, to back off or exert more pressure as uh, the Impact DMP just unsuccessful for the time being. And now they have to rely on something else, which they really don't have because there isn't any avenue to throw a frag grenade through. Ooh, a 12 gauge slug to the chest is not gonna quite take us Wolverine here But he's really got to respect this angle send in another player to go for it And Joe is gonna find the headshot before Skyline is able to find a couple in the chest of another player once again soft uh, wall Still muted though. They're gonna have to take another stab at this one and Grinder still has not managed to get any hard breach off the exothermics are just not finding their mark after posturing for two of them and it's gonna get him killed as well They're even up on three three right now and SMG 11 just sing right through that little soft wall That is still a huge benefit to the defense now as <laughs> Still fighting up top sky still has a nade available two of them actually took two to get the last kill and this one's not going to quite trade out with his own downing so see why is going to waddle his way on over and finish off another kill this round well, the pressure is now mounting on wolverine and joe who have to complete a 2v3 caboose pushes up is unsuccessful and de dealing a lethal amount of damage to joe but definitely does enough that one more magazine will put them into the grave so a 1v3 now all in wolverine they are going to use a ee1d scan it's actually going to fulfill inside of the boots of their fallen comrade and they're going to join them in the grave map one is over ryo grand comes storming back after a lackluster attack they come away with a victory in the end after a massive round streak so honestly an exciting first map trip yeah, that's crazy. Five rounds in a row to take it by storm from behind. Ryan Grant show us that they're absolutely capable of taking this series. This is their map choice, though, and Oregon is a pretty well-rehearsed map for just about every team, like we were saying before. So Chalet is where things are going to get a little bit more interesting. Again, a player favorite map. Everyone loves heading to Chalet, and I love Castanet, so it'll, we'll be pretty quick to get back after just a couple minutes of break here, and then we'll continue this matchup.
All right, welcome back. We just had a little bit of a break between map one and map two, where we just saw CMU. They lost Oregon against Rio Grande, who came storming back. So, so far, we've had an exciting match so far, and that's going to continue going on to map two, which is Chalet. I'm Light Rose, and joining me is Treasure. Howdy, yeah, five rounds in a row for Ryle Grand. It looked dire for them after the first half with Central Methodist really taking the power plays on their defensive half, but I guess it's just a defensive side of the map for these two teams, especially uh, maybe that Thatcher ban is something really mm -hmm. that ended up swinging things for the comfortability of the two of them, but Ryle Grand showing us that defense, they actually get to start on defense once again when we go to Chalet, so we'll see how that works out for them. They got to choose their half, so... This is their choice to be on defense again, and clearly that's where they feel more comfortable. So they're going to be hoping to get a foot up or maybe even a full leg up like they did on their last defense here and try and make this stuff count for Chalet. But this is a more attacker-sided map for sure. Yeah, and Methodist is starting on the attack. So they, uh, they struggled a little bit when it came to destroying utility, but so did Ryo Grant. Kind of seems to be a common theme between them. Ryo Grant takes out Capital for one reason and one reason only, and that is to make sure that Boosted yep. cannot lean on the Brazilian man. Or I, just, I don't know what it is about Boosted. They were involved in seven or eight flanker extraordinary deaths i just that's impressive like even if they were the opening death the being that involved that many times yeah uh sometimes sometimes there's a lack of droning that was given a problem towards either team on the opening picks and sometimes it was just storming in and letting the gun skill flare out and boosted definitely has confidence if nothing else confidence to spare a rooney we saw also getting used so ryan pretty much like target banning over here uh, although uh, i don't know if she got used that heavily but upstairs she's a little bit more useful so this might be pretty relevant yeah that feels more like a map centric ban rather than a player centric ban because like you mentioned she can be mighty useful up on that top floor so far we're going to be going to bar gaming we're going to see the Attack usual the operators enemy being enemy brought and i think is there a site better for frost than bar gaming i think it's hard to compete because she just has everything you need on this side with the amount of windows there are you just place down those frostmen she has the deployable shield that you're able to use up on mezzanine so quixie is the man of the hour right now yeah and those are great in objective too because when you come down to the last couple seconds in a round sometimes you just have to vault over a couch or run around a chair real quickly and if there's just a, an innocuous little frost map place there even the best players don't have time to look around for it you can't break line of sight with where you know that last opponent is on the defense so they can be absolutely deadly and finish off a round where otherwise you'd have to risk your head so the shield also goes upstairs where quixie is right now with the reinforced wall and a peak hole aided by a Kiba barrier, this is going to make it pretty easy to hold this angle for Mezzanine and make sure that players aren't getting into library really early. But that's exactly what Central Methodist wants. Three players already starting, two of them repelling on up and getting ready to shoot through these windows. Yeah, library is such a core part of this area. I don't think there was a frost mat on that. I hope there not was. because... Yeah, okay, well then Caboose yeah. just... No, I went. Just... <laughs> I mean... I'm kind of confused to what the point the impact was. I, I don't. Maybe they maybe they just were trying to actually get it out the window and miss. But uh, who knows? As Caboose's keeper barriers, there's still going to be a central part of the defense. Yeah, just down down a frag or an impact grenade, and I don't think it's very likely that that uh, particular frost mount is going to find its value, especially since the players have peeled off of it now. Quixie has moved uh, quite some distance all the way over here to office side. Has found a player on bathroom window, looking to peek this one from a dangerous angle, and someone is already watching it. So Boosie gets a free kill right here on Quixie, who is a little bit too bold for his own good, and has almost baited uh, Seawads as well. And now that bathroom is actually a dangerous avenue for the attack. And Caboose has to uh, settle his way on over here to make sure he's behind the bulletproof wall. That there is highway, one of the most impactful spots on this objective. CMU, they've been in this situation before and actually let it slip through their fingers. They've gotten two kills early on, but then have immediately followed it with 
two deaths on their own. Sky takes some damage. He's dangerously close to actually getting shot down, but survives so far. As right now, there isn't anybody else up on the second floor. The closest player is going to be Caboose, who now has to take a firefight without the help of their deployable shield, but they have this little thing called a Kiba barrier that's going to help them. They peek away from the library just in time for Sky to actually enter their vision, and eventually they fall back down to the site. Hopefully it will be enough time for Wild Brent to fire back a little bit, but as Wolverine takes out Nice, it's going to be a lot harder to do now. Okay, this TCGSG-12 is lined up behind here, but with both walls reinforced, he doesn't have as many lines of sight to be watching. Caboose gone, three kills, five boosted. Skyline is left all alone in sight, looking a little bit lost as attackers come in from all angles. There's five of them to be coming at him, and he just cannot line it up on one of them. It's a flawless round to start things off for Central Methodist. They're looking to put things back on the pace they were when we started. Just like last map. They opened it up with a flawless. The second round was almost a near flawless. And yet they eventually lost the map. So hoping that history does not repeat itself with this team. They're going to have to now attack Master, Bedroom, and Office. Bringing a, a core lineup that the defense is hoping okay, to just to bust the straight the down. I just, no smoke. No mute. Just plain old a, a zombie Jaeger, I think, might be the typical operators that you might see on the site. But Mozzie, Vigil, and Maestro are so different than we usually see. Yeah, that smoke is usually your plant denial with the placement of the first bubble. Maestro is definitely being brought for some plant denial. He sees through uh, attacking smoke grenades, which have a possibility of being relevant with what we saw on the last map. We saw quite a few smoke grenades going down he's uh is he just laying into a wall making a big hole oh yeah okay okay uh using the aldo to make footholes here I'm not... okay yeah it's because he's gone with the keratos as opposed to the bailiff as a secondary is to a bomb. Mm. see he did not bring the slug shotgun like we saw in the previous map he did not bring the acs 12 and i think that is a crime in itself the amount of slug <laughs> shotguns we need Nice broke All the slug pattern. shotguns. It is unforgivable to break the pattern. It should be like deer season now here. Deer season. We're, 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 <laughs> we're, we're on this beautiful chalet. Like slug everyone shot, should be packed up with their hunting weapons. I feel like it, slug it, shotguns would forward. blow a hole in a deer. I don't know much about uh, hunting guns, oh, but I, I feel nothing. like I know nothing. I feel like the impact would be way too large to bring in hunting. Uh, I, I imagine it's satisfying though. Uh, a lot of high caliber guns here. The Deagle comes out as well to make a similar little peek hole as well. And it's really hard for Swolverine to figure out what he's actually going to be peeking out. There's like four angles presented. Just one player in Caboose peeks out of the one of them that is at most relevant. Only he knows. And he's like a jack in the box picking up his kill on Swolverine. He's going to be shut down before he can start getting going like he was last map. And, well, there is going to be an immediate trade, so if Maestro is being brought for plant denial, then uh, hopefully Ryo can have another option. The only one left is going to be in the pocket of Ski, but I'm not expecting that to last much longer. Quixie and Boosted trade, as always, as they, they always find a way to just hunt each other, as Boosted now is 2-0 and so far in this map, and even if Quixie had won that gunfight, Grinder was immediately behind them in the stairs. So that map control is immediately taken by CMU. This has been a very efficient attack so far every time we've had a trade out but grinder just did not have their gun up and blackbeard's sole purpose blocking headshots is just absolutely useless in that scenario yeah caboose is playing like he sees the future right now knows exactly what he's looking for before it comes he's gonna drop down before there's much threat on him and keep his eyes up on mezzanine window he knows there's a player out here there's been a little bit of pressure earlier on and it's a great spot to be no claymore's play is actually run outs could be possible from either this door later on or the window just right next to it that's being watched from below. Things have slowed down here now that we get to 45 seconds remaining. That's pretty tight for how these rounds have been going. And three players on either side. Well, Ski is actually going to get spotted by Sky, who was on that balcony. But Raya, they're still trying to spread everybody out. Seawaz is by that sunroom. A skill line is hoping to get two. There isn't going to be a mini refrag. Right now, it just leaves Ace in the 1v2 with 
a slim chance of actually completing it. They still have to bust down this door. They have to kill Caboost and Siwans, who now know Ace's position due to that barricade being shot out. So there is a, an actual hey. trade between the two, so... I guess you leave only C1, so it, it looked good in stats, Treasure. It looks good in stats, but that one was pretty told when we saw the two kills on the execution. The defenders were ready, and they just outshot. The real credit, though, goes to Caboose, who stopped any any chance of a split push up through Piano Room. There's That couldn't even get started with Caboose locking down the entire lobby on his own. Uh, unfortunately, our support, our hard support and hard reacher Sky was just trapped up by, oh no, uh, I was trapped up by Mezzanine all round, wasn't able to get much done for the team until that final kill, so his impact on the round was unfortunately pretty muted. Unintended, I'm assuming. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, we'll go with that. Uh, the impact is making quite the impact in this yeah. round. In, before even we've actually started, as right now Caboose and Nice did take a, a good amount of damage. As Nice now will be about two to three bullets away from dying, depending on who they take an engagement with. And we're seeing for the first time tonight, Treasure to Kebby recently had a change where her call will now block any defenders from looking at cameras for the entirety that it goes on i'm not exactly sure how long it rings for but defenders don't have phones they don't have hands that they can actually tap with so it's going to be a useful skill if timed correctly and i think that's the kicker is if it's not used well then that recent buff won't actually have any impact yeah, the earlier the round, the less it's going to do, but if you place that well with your execute with the rest of your team, that can be a lethal benefit to the attack. Boosted the first one, picking up the kill once again, one of our well-reputed entry fraggers. That's an I on I so nice who was already so down on HP and right now down on death. But Caboost is here waiting up on this other avenue of the realm, waiting for anyone to pressure library once again, where he's found quite a bit of success already. Yeah, so they are seen as they did not eliminate the drone <laughs> and eventually they have to give up. They don't. Okay. Well, I think. All right. Let, let's oh. cut away. We don't need to give Caboose any more ego blows. And they have to actually fight too, but there's the boost they needed. They take out Sky and another one right off screen as Mozzie completes one. Methodist, once again, despite having an advantage. They end up losing a little bit. They're down one player, now down another as Quixie fires back. I don't know, what is it about these two players? How how I does Caboost find so much value here? Blinded, running between sites, peeking two different people, or three different people, uh, like twice each. He makes a kill and he gets a refrag off of himself, not even dying too. That's absolutely insane. Nah, uh, Wolverine and Joe do have a decent chance at this. As Caboost, the psychic, he's been able to really find a lot of kills in a lot of influential places. He's actually up by the library. I believe there's only one player in the site, and that might be Ski. Who's just, or excuse me, Skyline, I guess if you, if you say that, that, it definitely looks like Ski. But Skyline is hiding just behind that bar. The Mozzie Pest isn't actually going to stop the information from going through, as Nobad's going to fight through stock takes out skyline and a great play going off of some crucial information for methodist they make it a 2v2 and i think with that one kill they could turn this around yeah that there's a joe gaming moment that uh a not reinforced wall is a real big problem that's the easiest place to kill a defender here from and that's the best power angle on this objective hands down so wolverine now has it it's a spot that the attackers don't usually end up and Sight is entirely clear. The defenders are playing off site. They know they've got the fuser, but if that gets picked up at all, it's going to be very easy for Central Methodist to put it down. Here comes the first gunfight of this stalemate. So Wolverine finds the kill on Caboose, and as he wants, he has to stay alive. He's choosing a corner in order to just try and bite out his time, hoping that the briefcase won't make its way back in time, and it will die. He's just a hide to win. Seawads is just king at staying alive in this game. They they weren't killed last round. They weren't killed this round. And now he's they elusive. 
I know he is elusive. He gives Ryle Grand another round simply because Sammy did not have the time to go grab the diffuser and see once did play it correctly, did not try to take an engagement and just tried to wait it out using that second man in that scenario of the timer. They get a lead, head over down to the basement as they do want to seem to like they want to avoid that kitchen area. And we'll have to see why going into this one is they still bring the Kaid as influential as ever that TCSG yeah I, I, I don't know what it is about tonight but Skyline has just attacker. been clicking heads with that thing yeah it's great and just no one else has found the same kind of a success as he had with other slug shotguns and we've seen plenty of them I mean, we've mentioned it every time because it's just a, a little exciting to see but uh big focus here we got the Kaid here to defend the wall that's gonna be a big electrification in addition to the Mute Chambers, one of them staying in the pocket probably for a trick later on once the Mute Chambers have been totally eradicated. But the attack, they've got Grinder. He's been locking in the Blackbeard and locking in the EMPs as well, so that'll be the replacement for Thatcher on this. It'll probably be relevant very soon in addition to Sky. Yeah, but spawning over there. We'll see what they do after they get Snowmobile Garage open because that's, I think, what really tells how an attack is going to go against basement. It's not opening up the garage unless you fail to do it or it takes forever. It's about what you do with your second push. I just don't think it's still smart bringing the Blackbeard. And we've seen is how little impact he's actually had. The Rotero almost gets through, but just at the last moment, it gets shot out. And I don't know if the Mute Jammer is going to be back online. It will. And so now, Methodist, they've thrown a frag grenade in there. Smoke grenade will be used to try to drain out the ADS, but it didn't. And now you can see they are running away from the snowmobile garage door because they can't open it. They were unsuccessful in their play. Oh and now God. they lose boosted. They lose their Rotero simply because that C4 was thrown out from the stairs, I believe. I think Caboose might have done that. But yeah, no, that was a oh, wow. great play from them. Yeah. Yeah, he threw it and immediately ran off, which is good because Swolverine ran up to meet him. Doesn't get a kill off of it, though. He's just a little bit late. And the defense, Ryo Grand winning the utility game as hard as you can so far on this map. That's a minute and a half wasted for the attack. It's a full uh, flank that they don't have to watch for the entire round from here on. So they can just look at these more important choke points, like right here on French and with Quicks. He's getting a second kill as well. There's just not much that's going to be done for gunfights for the attackers to get through this. I think this is a faded round already. I think they're looking destiny in the face, and it is not being kind to them. Joe Gaming is going to be dropped. Quixie is looking like they're hungry for more. Sky is going to fall to Seawad's just replacing one another right there. It's potentially a flawless round. I, Ryo Grand, I think the one problem, they just cannot get rid of the utility. They cannot get kills anywhere to make up for that lack of utility clear on the attacking side. So, I mean, it's very easy to see why they are struggling in these rounds. And the defense doesn't really have to do too much. Caboose's Mew Jammer just has to exist. Ski line just, or Ski, I don't know why it's throwing me off. Skyline. <laughs> just has to throw those Kaid Claws and defend them with a modest amount of defense. And Methodist just cannot do anything yep. about it. And Wolverine sneaking onto site, probably not as quiet as they thought. That had to be one of the most unnerving moments for Swolverine trying to get through site. Gets his one kill, <laughs> denies the flawless, but us with our omniscience, we get to see all those blue outlines just squatted up every angle around the briefcase. And Swolverine. Looking through sight, snowmobile, empty connector, empty main stairs, empty blue, empty, like, everyone is off site. Like, just only one player in yeah. any part of objective at all. Everyone hanging out by the other back stairs. And there's not much you can do about that. Like, you have no idea where people are going to be. It's not going to be any default holds because basically they're defending the staircase instead of defending garage. I mean, absolutely. So, Master Bedroom, a lot of changes on Methodist. Bringing a Jackal, bringing an Osa, bringing a Gridlock. No hard bridge. Yeah, it's, it's important to mention that. So I think that takes out a regular office take, because you, you're not going to be able to get the wall open unless uh, 
Gridlock, I think, has the impact. The MPs, I don't think she has those hard breach charges. So, Solarium or from Library is going to be my best guess. And even still, a, a tank from Library usually ends up in that wall being open. So, really, Methodists are kind of pigeonholing themselves. Yeah, that's a little worrisome to see. Boost is the only one not spawning over on the eastern side of the map, but is moving directly over towards Solarium. And that's where I'd hope for this to be. Library's going to be a lot harder to take that way. And they've been having a hard time getting into that room in the first place at all, especially with Caboost playing there so often. Oh, boost and now giving them an avenue of attack as that really does shut off a good part of Solarium. Nobody can peek through. Quixie! Okay gets dropped by sky and uh i think the, the footsteps were definitely a clear vision that hey somebody was around and from exactly where well jackal is probably the best operator for that situation right there so already a, a better start for methodist but we've seen this before treasure yeah, well, I do like what I'm seeing. Those gridlock track stingers going downstairs and up on top of the stairs are going to stop any, uh, or at least really slow down a flank later in the round. So that's going to be something that will aid them a huge amount if they're able to get this diffuse down. Looking to blitz their way into B side. There's just one player able to watch it right behind this. Keep a barrier going to impact out the shield. So Boosted no longer has that to work off of just the one on the window. But Boosted does find a kill to pick up as well, even further skyrocketing that KD. The attack is looking the best that we've seen so far. It has been, but you've still got a, a couple key players online. You've still got c -Wads, and you've still got Caboost. Well, you've still got c -Wads, so uh, there, there's a player who now has to the make flank. their way back to the site. Yeah, last time we've seen c -Wads who actually have to make their way back to the site, they haven't been successful in that. The Maestro Cam is going to be shot out, and so nice is going to be following that Maestro Cameras. It's a 1v5. c -Wads is going to have to flex on us viewers and us casters as hopefully the first one will be waiting right around the corner boosted surviving oh. on one hp that is a little demoralizing because now seawad still has to fight the one player that they could have killed right there and well potentially the elbow was spotted seawad's is being very oh man i don't i, I don't see what seawad's was doing they're playing very out in the open hoping that sledge would reveal themselves but just, there were so many guns still left alive. Yeah, I mean, he has he was on a timer, too. As soon as he was mm -hmm. the last one left, he knew that the diffuser was going down. That gives him the seven seconds of diffuser going down, plus uh, the time of the taken down itself. Like, he does not have much time to work with. He has to push. In order to win, like, his out is he picks up five kills and an absolute blitz and absolute glory. And but waiting around each and every corner just... It, there is no way to win like that. He's just playing to, you know, boost KD. And he doesn't I even mean, get that in the end, right? Yeah. Sometimes, like, I'm not saying that you should play for KD. I don't KD. think he was playing for KD, though, either. Yeah, but talking about in general, about just kind of playing... Not, playing for KD is just playing to get kills. That is what an entry is supposed to do. Or in, in theory, or waste time, but getting kills is probably what the, the best thing that you can do as an entry. And Seawads, they haven't really been engaging so far, and everybody else. Quixie has been the ride or die player for uh, Rio Grande, and surprisingly, Caboost has gotten a fair amount of opening kills despite them being mainly a support player. So maybe Seawads. I think they're playing aggressive, but they're playing way too aggressive far too late into the round. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's where you just uh, seeing these the shutdowns, seeing the inopportunity for finding kills. It's the same kind of thing as just last round where he's just not been coming online, getting aggressive when he needs to, and it's when he's been forced to by the attackers. Uh, this attack is going upstairs as the main focus. They're going to try and get some... Uh, vertical pressure. Uh, I don't think they have a lot for the floor. Oh, no, they got the sledge. So they're going to be opening up the floors, trying to get an angle directly into kitchen, and it seems like there's not too much to stop them from. I think one player upstairs in office so far. Frag grenade coming down to try and bait out Seawaz or kill him outright, but he's just going to be able to pop on out and right back to that position. 
Well, the castle barricade is actually going to be uh, nice and helpful for this fuse as it's going to deploy a lot of hockey pucks. And I believe it was actually shot out yep. by Caboose, but it destroyed the shield, which is honestly, that is a great enough trade for a utility because now Piano isn't going to be as cleared, but they still have the castle barricades. And that is the one thing Caboose has been the main fragger for Rio Grande and that's a little surprising like I said considering their support player but the more that they can do the more a chance that Rio Grande has at winning this match two to zero but now C wants is gone Joe gets close to following and they could potentially get boosted right back up as there goes grinder there goes boosted they make it so we potentially looking at a three three at right here treasure yeah, all this pressure from up above. So many holes opened up. There's no places for Skyline to hide. Boosted finds him, and Wolverine picks up the last kill of this round, keeping it going for the attack. They just had a, a full comprehensive push down right there. There wasn't anything that they're missing on their comp that pigeonholed them this time. It was just really well executed. <laughs> Yeah, and it was very well done, and I can hope to expect that from Methodist on their defense, as that was the only real staying point in the first map, was their defense, which was a 4-2 split, considering to their attack, which they got one to their name, and they got a lot more than that. They got three times as many. So already this map is going a lot better for them, and they're still keeping the all-important road. Yeah, to be honest, I think the teams will both look more comfortable here on Chalet than Oregon, which isn't something I'd expect to be saying, but a lot more comprehensive pushes and rotations between the two teams. Uh, Quixie here showing us a nook. That's a little bit of an interesting one. We've seen some very impactful flanks between these two teams, so that's exactly what he's looking for here and trying to get some more impact on those entries where he's made his name known today. Uh, hopefully a little more favorably on this map when he switches to attack. Yeah, I hope that will be something as well, that Seawads, they're good at surviving, haven't been the best at getting kills. Wolverine, they had a explosive opening in the first map, but they've been doing the same but they need to actually keep that consistent throughout the entire map because Methodist can't simply rely on boosted who once Ryo Grand actually turned their eyes toward boosted they were less opening kills and more opening deaths which put Methodist in an unfortunate position that they just could not make their way out of because their main fragger was the first player off the board Hmm. Yeah, Boosted is uh, moving around looking for these early kills on the roam. And oh, here we go. Quixie, the player to be hunting him, stealthing his way through, very quietly stepping and avoiding any cams. But Boosted is nowhere to be found. I think that's some old intel that they're working off of here. They, yeah, they're, they're insistent that he's somewhere here. But oh no, Boosted is off. I must have totally missed that one. Might be. Yeah, so, uh, well. It looks familiar to what I was just talking about 20 seconds ago. I, I'm impressed at how quickly they were able to work off of the communication that I gave them. It's now somebody else is going to have to pick up the slack. It's, oh, it boosted. Ran outside. Oh. How did he? How did he was he was moving. Like, mm. I thought he had just run down the main stairs at that too. rate. I thought I he was too. so much closer. Well, now, I'm, now, I'm, now, I'm waking, now I'm like, how did I miss that? <laughs> that, that? That would have been a significant amount of time. Uh, I guess I guess a couple seconds of my life lost to the Twilight Zone, but some more life lost as well for Grinder. He's just taking some damage, I think, off of the frag grenades coming in from outside their EMP impact missing its mark the second one doesn't actually hit the Kaid either so that wall is still electrified we can't move in and get our uh, uh selma charges going but caboose whoa, 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 just wide swinging here right into Wolf wolverine takes some damage from the c4 but has enough time to get out and still has the shield still has the ability to give those comms the yelping is coming out for both sides and wolverine's taking the odds and he's gonna win it too taking a headshot on the first one but caboose comes in taking two with himself in the head after head there's only two defenders left sky holding the angle into solarium 
Wait for that. He sees a gun, he sees a head, and he's gonna take it as well, even in this thing up real close with the team kill from the attackers and Grinder picking up ISO. Nice, he wants a suddenly the only player left. Once again, it's a situation he's familiar with, but he has to move up and try and find that diffuser. And there's two defenders left, he has no intel to work up. And off of a team kill as well, Ryan Grand just threw that one away. I, 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 I can't say it more simply than that. That was yep. a round they threw away. Caboose had a collateral almost just spraying down towards Piano, and that should have been an opener that Ryo Grand could have won, but the fact that they didn't have information, they just kind of clumsily fell onto the site. They gave that one to Methodist. Yeah. yeah. The, that 2K was so huge. They had Attack full access to objective from two different the angles. Game. They finally established the perfect opportunity for themselves and just gets washed away with that <laughs> that team kill really unfortunately. And then at that point, they didn't have any safe way to push up into Master Bedroom because there's still player hiding there. And the cross angle between uh, the outdoors uh, directly into office and through the big rotate hole would have lined up perfectly. We would have had everything lined up. Caboose would have had a uh, door cleared, if not a kill there, and they could have defused. I'm very glad that Caboose is not staying on Grim. Because Grim is the worst operator in the game. Like, I don't think that's up for opinion. He is horrible. Do not play Grim. That is a PSA from me. Do you, do here, you know why? Here first. Do you know why Grim is the, the very bad operator treasure? Enlighten me, Light Rose. Well, Grim is so situational. His bees are so small and they give such a small area. Not only is it a small area and a small amount of time, you have to pull out the launcher, shoot it in the general area of a rower who will probably peek you. Then after you have to put it away, if the pings are active, you have to pull out your gun, which takes a lot of time. And most of the time, you're not going to be able to find anybody with your bees because if you do, just drone them out and shoot them. That is simply the key to running out of rope. So that is why Grim is probably one of the worst operators in the game and can be solved by almost any other player. The Rotero's drones, hopefully getting something done as it's going to sneak through the drone hole. Might have been shot at. Yes, it did get shot at by a player from blue. They just have all eyes on that drone hole. But once again, Quixie igniting the flame of the duel with Boosted. They are going to win in this engagement. Boosted second time in a row that they've been the opening deck. On the well, here's the thing, actually, coming back to the Grim discussion real quick. There's uh, something other than a drone that can do that job better as well. And that's Jackal. And when he's not banned, and he has been pretty much a perma ban recently, uh, we're just seeing some specific counter picks. The Captain Tau ban this time coming out, that allows Quixie to take Jackal. And that's exactly what afforded him that first kill. Allows him to really quickly root out Boosted. And count a massive problem for their team off of the clock right there. Oh, there we go. We're actually getting the wall open here. That's a big moment for our attack. Rail Grant have that to work with now, and some defenders actually stuck in blue right now. Some angles are keeping those two pins. You don't want to have two stacked up right there for really any length of time because there's no more lines of sight that the two of them can hold than just one player. Well, uh, the advantage actually needs to be taken advantage of by Ryo Grand, who had an advantage in the previous round that they just gave away. They have one of the sites actually controlled, and that's going to allow Caboose to put the diffuser down, something they weren't able to do in the previous one. They are going to work with one less player, but they still have one more player than Methodist. That diffuser is going to start to beat, but now we're on even footing. Grinder takes a couple seconds to shoot at Quixie, but eventually is going to fire, takes them out, and it leaves just two players up against the ref of Methodist. One outside and one right on these stairs, as those gridlock track stairs are going to be loud as ever. They give away the position, and now it's the mute who can't win that one. One Rio Grande got dangerously close to letting it go again, but they bring it back and we're once again all tied up. 
Skyline gets three right there. I can't believe he actually started peeking that angle. That was one of the most insane things he could do right there. But it's going to turn out he's feeling himself after that 2K. That's ridiculous. And the round was basically won already. The last player was outside as well to support the defuser. So there's no way this is going away. But he's just going to flex real quick and pick up three more. Uh, it's just, this is going to be a back and forth match. That, I mean, last time we were max regulation round. We had the maximum amount of regulation round, but the fact that Ryo Grand was on their round streak, I think was the reason why we were able to avoid overtime. This one isn't as black and white. It has really been back and forth, but I think the, the main thing in these two rounds, Ryo Grand still has the advantage on the They still have control on the attack. They gave it away in round seven, but they regained it in round eight. So it's just going to be the story of whether or not they can actually control their own control. Okay, so bear with me on this thought process. Ryle Grand, they had two off rounds where they got some wins on the first half last map. And then they had a five round streak. So they had two, a one, a one, and then a five. This map, they had three in a row on defense and the others go to Central Methodist. I think it's time for a, another streak. They're basically only winning in streaks except for those two one-off rounds before these two had each other sized up. So Riot Grand is as worrisome as possible right now because their momentum is so heavily conducive to their play. It's these rounds where they are pretty undeniable too when they're really winning out. So this is where I start being really scared as Central Methodist. They get a really play to the book, especially oh, no. off of last round, especially after losing boosted two rounds in a row. He gave them their first half here, their three rounds off that 13-3 and three record that he had just a little bit ago. Barely missed angle for Grinder. doesn't quite get to shut down Quicks. He was just hanging on with a couple more health, but on a roll as a player. And he's happy to pick up more kills and some more intel with his ooh, foot scans here, but it's not going to be quite fresh enough intel to work up. Oh, spotted out. Grinder, the uh, slow fire rate of that 9mm is going to be to their death. Oh but they peek at a different angle. Do not miss any bullets. And now, that is two kills on the side of Methodist. And they've got the advantage once again on the defense. So, Riot Grand now have to work without Quixi, who's been one of their main entries. And they have to work with a layer of soft destruction gone. And I think gone six in the pocket of Ski Line and one frag grenade in Caboose. Other than that, it's just going to be potentially rooting out these hatches with So Nice, but this is looking like it's a better round for CMU. Yeah, luckily for the attack, there's very little I actually have to work through with explosives. Just one shield from Grinder, and I assume that was upstairs. I didn't quite catch where it ended up, and so probably not a problem anymore at all. Jordan out at this point. They've got to get some more intel to work off of. They're two floors away from the actual objective. It's all the way down in the basement. They're going to have to grab some ground and grab some intel fast, making sure that there's no one roaming or lurking up here before they can start moving up, and that's going to buy a lot of time for Central Methods. Actually, with 50 seconds, they cannot drone out every relevant spot, so they're going to have to kind of send it here. Oh, oh and yeah, at this time you don't have time for res yeah especially with joe gaming sitting right there to pick up a third one on the round it's gonna be a 2v4 they basically have to bum rush site in order to find a win yeah they're trying to see if actually anybody is around no, i don't have time but, for this yeah every member of methodist is actually on the site itself which you will be facing in about 10 to 15 seconds because that is your only avenue. Nice is going to take a little bit of chip damage in duel, but the fact that Grinder is waiting around the corner is eventually going to be their death. An ace might be still possible as right now? No. Unfortunately. Ah, uh, not mean, quite. Yeah, snags away the ace. For his the, life. Yeah, the, the quad is still an important thing because Grinder swung that so effectively back in CMU's way. Hmm, no streak here. Uh, Grand blunted before they could run away with another map. They are the ones with that first map to their side. So if they can come from behind here, find a couple rounds in a row, they can actually win flat out. Central Methodist, though, is pretty close to taking this one to our third map. So as long as they can persevere, we will see ourselves on Villa in just Attackers a few minutes. Locate and defuse bombs. I think it, we, we've still got a good bit. I trust that Ryo Grand will not let two more rounds go by without at least a round victory or two. They just, their attack hasn't been lackluster enough 
where I can see them constantly dropping round after round after round. I'm just boosted has been the opening death. Three rounds in a row. Yeah. Nobody's really been able to refrag them in most of these scenarios, and they haven't been able to net themselves a kill on the defensive end. So that's been three deaths without really doing anything. And they're actually going to go on the cap can instead of something like a rook. So more of an offensive, or I guess cap can more of a defensive operator that can actually do, you know, some killing instead of trying to boost up the rest of his teammates. Okay, here's a little micro thing. We've kind of highlighted the position of some maestro cams, at least through observation. We haven't really talked about it. But Central Methodist has put them in some curious locations. And we've seen stuff like maestro cams just getting punched. Uh, you really don't want that to be available. We saw the one in ooh, lobby stairs, and that's just not going to add any pressure. It's going to give you intel, but it's not going to do the job much better than the default cam at that point, because it's immediately going to get at least the glass cracked, if not fully destroyed by explosives. So it's just not going to give Grinder that lasting value that he needs. There's some creative spots that give good coverage, but it's the risk to the camera that's really hurting you. Boosted, first pick three rounds in a row. So he goes, okay. I'm going to have some lasting value to the team. Maybe make a kill door or two. Uh, we'll see if we can blunder into something. And boom, there it is. First kill for him. He is turning things on their head. Oh, and taking out the kneecaps of C1. So playing a little bit more conservatively and playing an operator that potentially Rio Grande aren't ready for is actually going to net a kill as the Solarium take is actually going to be the goal of Rio Grande. Caboost, I believe, will be going for... A, a different angle once they're going on this window as now as this wall is going to be opened up there's a lot of methodist members waiting just behind it and nobody on rag grand is actually going to peek it they're just going to try to get it open spook a couple of, of members of cmu and back off hoping that one player will present themselves as boosted slowly working their way towards trophy but i think Everybody knows where they are coming from. The gridlock trance singers might give away their vision, but no, there he goes. Boosted. We get their second of this half and of this round, so they have definitely started to emerge from their shell. Yeah, he's got to be satisfied with his work here. Doesn't even need to push up on Solarium. The damage is done. He knows with all those track stingers, it's going to take forever to find his way in there. These castle barricades are doing their job perfectly. They're funneling the attack. The only way it's going to go in with any sort of speed is right through those holes that have already been created. Oh, no! Boosted on the run back. Finds his third kill. Just a uh, player quick. See Walk it out right in front of where he happened to be. Another kill for the attack here. I so nice finds that, or finds the first one actually in Grinder, who previously did take some damage. He's still got to watch the flank, though. Two players stacked up on each other. Sky's the second one to go down, but with 20 seconds, three players up for the defense, it's going to be a tough task. Well, it's coming through here right through the soft wall. C4 is just going to be some more area denial. They have to push through it and using this smoke. They actually have a good line of sight for it. Ice Nice goes down. It's just Caboose. Quad kill for Boost, and he finally goes down, but Caboose has to do it all himself now. Oh, he's going to peek the corner, take out the castle. Oh God, it's potential, but Wolverine is going to be a lot sm My heart stopped. <laughs> my heart stopped for a second there, no. Treasure. There was a shred of a chance. And if the bullet had hit the head <sighs> of Kaid, we would be looking at a tied scoreline. But CMU, oh my God. they scrape by and make Yo, it if, six. Oh my God. <sighs> If Caboose had 20 more rounds per minute on that weapon, he traced the head. He would have had it. It's just, he traced, he traced the outline. A bullet going on either side of that cranium there. That hurts. He was so, so close to that clutch on zero, zero on the clock. Defenders, protect your oh my God. Defused by attackers. <sighs> you, you get like a couple of those every month, maybe. Every, like, it's so rare when you just get those nail biters where it's time is not on the team's side. You know, the amount of players are seeming overwhelming, and yet somehow they grind their way back. Man, yeah, like I said, I said he's got to do it himself. There is no world in my mind where he does it himself, and then suddenly up. A pixel difference, like a millisecond of latency difference, and we could have just had it right there. Oh my god. <laughs> We're moving over to Bar Gaming. We haven't seen this defense yet from Central Methodist, so it'll be a little bit of a change of pace, but they're already doing quite well for themselves. Three rounds on this defensive half. That's as many as Ryle Ground was able to manage for their entire half, and if they could get just 
one more. They get to win this map. They get to win out on Chelle and move into that medium uh, map on Villa, that decider, too. Yeah, Villa could be a heart pounder of a match, one that we never truly know who's going to emerge because each of these maps have shown a, where a team's strength and weaknesses are, how any time a performance can come down to the actual map that a team is on. Sky is going to start oh. this one off. Caboose actually almost pays for it from repelling, but there is so nice immediately there for the refrag. So now that's a good section of map control that Ryle Grin have taken very early. But now it's just going to be about pushing towards this library, pushing towards the library stairs itself, as this fuse charge what? will destroy. Look at the utility that it destroyed there. Oh, Beautiful. Sheesh. Yeah, that would have taken out a shield if it was there as well, which is a mystery. There's three shields for the defense, not a single one placed on a highway. It would have been destroyed if there wasn't uh, like an ADS or something for it, uh, which there isn't one there at all. So Boosted just uh, couldn't continue playing there. It's really dangerous. Grinder is going to find a refrag here for the defense, though, after losing so much pressure. He's been droned out now, though, so he's going to have to drop down if there's any players watching lobby he would be devastated right now but there just isn't there's only two guns left and they're both upstairs this is a, a dangerous site to give up that early especially with a fuse in place still three cluster charges i i think there's a chance that a cluster charge could potentially find somebody if it goes over towards the supply closet this caboose will oh my god down it's not going to be close enough to actually find anybody but we're at back at a 2v2 okay. joe gaming on the tachanka if he spreads his fire out and that timer is going to start to getting close to hitting triple zeros he his stock or his usefulness is just going to explode this is this is scary right here the fire grenades are really really big and joe still has plenty of them remaining to just keep flaming out the entry points to site but the tachanka or sorry not the tachanka the fuse is still could just take away this entire game with one of those remaining. With both these players at Central Method is turtling up. This one makes it very scary. Wolverine has to move, but no one's pushed up to actually work with that, unfortunately. So the last explosive charge isn't going to find his mark. Joe is bringing the gun up right now from the supply closet. He's just so close to finding it ahead. Caboose finds that kill just like he missed the one previously. Bullets going out and the health going down for both players. So nice tries to put down the diffuser. Fire grenades could be huge right now, though, as a Mm. It looked like a nade was coming in. I don't know what that was, but the entire room is flamed out except for the one most relevant spot. And Joe is stuck. He can't really exit this because there are two deployable shields on either side. And if he just hops over it or at least tries to go straight yes. into bar, he's taken out by Caboose, who has an angle everywhere. That one was doomed as soon as the diffuser got put down. <sighs> wow. It's just the beginning, so much map control taken so quickly uh, by the attackers, but then immediately they lost way too much manpower for their trouble right there. Like, that's, that's a rough spot to be in, and they were able to play smart and get themselves out of there. They would have clutched that really heavily. It wouldn't have been uh, a nail-biter there in the end if they had used that fuse charge a little bit better and made sure that they could pin someone down and take Swolverine Defenders out with it. But attackers. they did a good job of playing their angles there and just sticking Joe in the corner not letting him out for his life. Stuck in a place that he would not want to be, but we're looking at a very similar scoreline that we did in the last map. Ryo Grant, instead of being the attackers, they have to be the one climbing up that hill trying to bring us into overtime because that is the only scenario in which they come away with a 2 and 0. Oh, otherwise, Methodist will take us to a map 3. And so far, it has just been max regulation rounds in both of these rounds. I, is this going to be just a map, or excuse me, a match where it's just the maximum amount of rounds possible? I would not be surprised one bit. It's been so much more back and forth this map than the last one, and the last one was so darn close for these two teams. Uh, we're back to basement. This is not the first option for Central Methodist. This isn't their first choice, but their second one. And one that's had mixed results so far so it could be kind of curious where this goes the attack is going through trench pretty fast here from big garage these two players really facing uh 
no, no, no blockages at all moving on up there and there's no players in wine room right now either so none of their actions so far have been noticed by the defense meanwhile uh the other three members of their roster are working on snowmobile garage which has had mixed results so far this match every single team has tried to just force their way through this drone hole I don't think it's been successful a single time so far the impact DMP it has to be thrown at the tippy top, as I believe that is where the Kaid Claw is actually stationed. It's through the, it's through the floor. So we'll see if the Impact DMP has enough range for that. But so far, it has been a little bit of a split push. Quixie no. enters the site and he takes be able Scott to do that. off guard. He's paling out the bearing nine as we're at a 4v4. Joe actually gets the yeah. opening kill. Shuts down Seawines. But now, Habata is inside the site. This will allow Ryo Grand to open up that wall to potentially plant over by this wine area. But Wolverine is actually going to push the attack. They get punished by Quixie. And Quixie could be the opener here. Could be the only reason in why Ryo Grand come away with a win. We go to overtime. It's going to be about 35 seconds for these other three defenders to take out the four remaining members of Ryo Grand. But now it's going to be so hard to stop Quixie. Quixie, one man army here. Fragging, utility, defusing, pumping up the cost right now. Going for a drop shot, isn't going to quite find it, is downed himself. Iso nice, picks up the other kill. Uh, no ace potential here, and Joe is just looking for that consolation kill at this point, trying to finish the down play. The only one he has intel on, but he doesn't quite find it. That was a really good pre-fire right there, actually, showing that he really has the knowledge of the map. It's his double kill for the round, but he's trapped now. There's no way he gets out of connector alive. Uh, I guess I eat my words, but he doesn't get any further than that. Okay, so our defense here, no one is watching trench at all that is a major avenue for attack the fact that uh it's totally unnoticed that we have someone coming in there is a problem the fact that we <laughs> lose a player in a wine room and that should be like a defcon 5 situation that is they are in and they have a kill on site that means that there's at least one more person on the entryway from trench and that means that basically we already have like the attackers have taken wine room at that point, so there should have been a full rotation to try and deal with that. At that point, snowmobile garage door be damned. Like we need to deal with the players who are already in. Like and that came down anyway, so we didn't need three people watching that drone hole. Well, uh, overtime has reared its head. It is going to be Methodist on the defense on both sides. It was a three-three. But honestly, it was Ryo Grand on the attack where they really felt a lot more pressure. We had a couple more players just start to emerge and ski line. Skyline, why is it getting. <laughs> I said it earlier in the game. I think it's the, the two eyes. I'm so many eyes. What I'm saying, it. yeah. But I think uh, Skyline started to emerge. Caboose continued their reign, and of course, Quixie. But Methodist. It took a long time for them to actually start to get activated. Boosted had a one or two rounds where they weren't the opening death and actually were able to put yeah. together a couple kills. Yeah, so we are staying on the same sides here for overtime. We'll be switching after this one. A spawn peak opportunity here. Boost is looking to open things up, as it usually is, with uh, some pretty deadly fashion. Back on the cap can once again to be guaranteeing some more value, especially later into the round that he wasn't able to during those rounds where he was dying really quickly. But none of that is going to be fruitful quite yet here. Well, Boost it actually doesn't get the opener on a explosive device they get it with their own bullet and they shut down potentially the one member of raya grand who could really make a difference caboose no retero drones no ar-33 oh and potentially a player of boosted who's gonna run out oh. and get blown up okay i saw the track stingers and i thought there was no way that there's going to be more denial there but <laughs> Central Methodist drop track stingers and Claymore. There is no way anyone's getting out that door, I guess, as it turns out. I guess without a, an impact, an impact probably would have just cleared everything and gave it to him. It but now we're drunk, even back again. Taking out the door. Yeah, yeah well, I, if, I guess if you knocked out the door and then. Uh, I, either way, it takes a lot of time, so it would have definitely dented his possibilities there. So two players kind of dying totally separate from the main fighting and main utility game. Active around, to say the least. 
T-Lots, though, they are struggling. Quixie is going to be the one to really pick up a lot of this slack. Even though the main fragger of Caboose is gone, Quixie opened up the last round, and I think they could be the ender for this one. They can oh, finish no. off Wolverine, and that's a huge one, because now you've lost Skyline as well. So, so nice is bleeding out, but they're able to find the other member of Methodist, who was at about 1 HP, but 2v2, Seawads is going to have to come alive, and they haven't been able to this map, so I think I think their, their backs are in the corner right now. A PSA to Jackal players, deactivate that gadget when you go into a gunfight. You don't need it when when you're not scanning. Uh, that actually totally blinded Quixie. Didn't give him an opportunity to get that kill that was just free right in front of him. He would have had it, but he was blinded by his own gadget that he was the one bringing to the table. And we're back to 2v2 in our first round of overtime. It really could be anyone's game, but Joe has the shield to be working off of on Piano Room. It's a really strong angle to be on and he's got sky over here watching the one place that the attacks are actually gonna have to come in from he yeah. sees the head and he takes it right off see what suddenly on his own once again the last player in the round he finds his kill and he needs one more he's given away his location though as he pings through that decoy oh and we actually end up with the gunfight but it does go in the favor of the defense here sky has taken to the ground oh okay there we go that's what he was looking for the rotate <laughs> hole i was like what are you doing down there Close enough, but I think the fact that CBS wasn't ADSing is probably a factor in that. The time meant that he had to go fast, but it also meant that he had to be prepared for anybody around any corner. So it was a recipe for disaster. Even though it was close, it is still Methodist going away with the victory. As Rio Grand head back to the defense, it's been seven rounds since they were able to do this and the first site that they go to Defenders, is the kitchen dining right area now. and they bring a lot of information on, actually, excuse me not kitchen dining yeah, they switched the last second on you i got it to bamboozle it's the basement yeah this is pretty good uh we've seen some problems for both teams uh with the garage door okay uh a decoy and a shield invested in blue there's three shields being brought by the defense rail grant getting a ton of deployables so a lot of explosives will have to be used by central methodist to get through those but you have to wonder if we're going to get full value out of three different shields no no utility denial no wall denial being brought on rag that rag grand that has been even yeah no you that has been the oh, main no avenue of success for defenders on this site because attackers haven't been able to deal with Kaim Claws, haven't been able to deal with Mew Jammers, and now honestly, oh my God, this Methodists is what are getting on. gifted. That's the wall denial. <laughs> that's the wall denial. He so doesn't nice quite land on the right person, though. I mean, but that's that's still a big one. You Huge. lose your only set of frag grenades so now you, there's a lot more security in where you are headed and i think guns are going to be the main difference between these two teams is is Ryo grand going to emerge with blazing bullets or are they just going to let methodist walk over them yeah well there goes snowmobile isonice is kind of trapped here the shield was actually in pocket when he was peeking but now it goes out he's not leaving boat though he's he's camping here for the rest of the game not terrible with the grismonds i mean that's kind of how you play l in a lot of situations but right here is kind of a rough spot at least with the frag grenades are gone so it's not going to be an insta kill still some time being taken off the clock because methodist they have time on their side they don't have to waste it in trying to get the wall open and they're using that to to drone out, catch anybody on these defenders who are just going to emerge from their hidey holes. But the smart option is to not do that, surprisingly, if you are Ryo Grand, because there's no frag grenades. They can't do anything to actually take you out from that position, but hold a crosshair to that angle and hope to emerge, which it, it's going to waste a lot of time, but the defenders are still going to have the advantage because there's that deployable shield. Oh, I so nice peaked right there. Doesn't get punished for it, but that's such a deadly thing to be doing here. You're hold up in this one position. There's no rotates you could be making. That smoke grenade is going to be eaten up by an ADS, and such is the second one. No grenades to go in through it. Uh, defender kill here. Quixie beats out Boosted, uh, the player who's been pumping up the kills, especially on his attacking side previously. And he's not going to get that same value now. And down to trench with the rest of the attack. There's oh, still five defenders left, despite being in really rough situations. Rattlegrind has a huge numbers advantage. 
damage. And actually, these Heidi Holes are going to work towards their uh, advantage once it can, once the attackers are forced to push up. Well, Sky gets pressured back. The track singers don't do much. And I would say that there's potentially an opener, but Joe Gaming immediately oh. gets refragged as a 3v2. And So Nice is trapped in this area. So if everybody else on Riot Grand doesn't push back the rest of the attackers, they don't get a kill, there could be disaster lurking right around the corner because they know the position of one of these players. There's 15 seconds left. A smoke cannon is going to be thrown out, and So Nice emerges from their nest. They take out the gridlock, and now Sky is in the 1v3, and they die. And now it is maximum overtime, maximum Just like you amount of rounds. I did call it. And, well, it's CMU back on the defense where they got a previous victory. Yeah, this is such an even, even game. It's been 3-3 on all sides. We get, uh, is this a, a defending win for both teams on overtime? So that's the only time that we've seen this kind of split. They're both even on round still, exactly even with 7-7. Seven, seven. But it's been the defense side that's won the last two rounds here. So we might be seeing a little bit of favor towards Central Methodist. And they are going to need it because if they can't take this one round, then they're out of this match. And Ryle Grand gets to move on with that. 2-2 record that they're looking for so feverishly. We're going back to basement again. This time there is wall denial, although Swolverine's Kaida has been really effective so far this game, and Ryogran has had a hard time making sure that this wall comes open, especially with the ease that they uh, gave away last round. I think a Thatcher would be the biggest operator that Ryogran could have, but he's gone. He's banned. We can't have him. Yeah. So what is gonna what is gonna be the play? Ryo Grand can't really attack Kanon because they just haven't been successful in that in the past. They aren't bringing any Rateros. They're not bringing a Twitch. They're bringing one set of frag grenades in the pocket of Caboose. So I think a trench attack might be the avenue potentially over by Blue. But look at this, having the exact oh. angle on Sky. They don't take really any he, damage, and Sky yeah. just plays for it. That's like 20 damage going out from Sky, and he's just about down from all that damage and he wouldn't have been able to get back from that in time with that angle still going so now he's kind of relegated to anchoring up trying to avoid gunfights as long as possible just being a set of eyes and a watchful angle for his team boosted still upstairs still looking for something not quite as cheeky as a spawn peak but over here in the bar in for an opportunity no one's coming his way though and it is indeed a snowmobile uh concerted a strike right here Burning out these ADSs, and we'll see if we get what we want for the attack. Now the frag grenade goes through, Whoa. almost kills Wolverine, but a boost, it breaks open the window. I believe it will be oh spotted, but is it shot out? The C4 doesn't have the impact that it really wanted to, and now the Sabana Pillars will be able to open a hole. So the main puzzle piece that everybody was just stumped by this entire time, Raya Grand has opened the wall, and they've opened an avenue of potential victory. Nobody has an, a kill yet in this round, but a lot of damage done to Methodist. And right now, here is where cures are made and victors are going to be born. The difference between a map three and a match victory is going to be the next 80 seconds on the clock. And with some a lot of explosives flying around, Quixie is going to get us started as always. Last time we were on this site, takes out Wolverine, enters the site of wine as of, according to Quixie's Bible. He's just oh, going to allow to enter the site. Rookie is going to actually not net a kill. They pay for it. One kill on the side of CMU. It was just a lackluster wine defense and Ryo Grand win two to zero right here. This here is a textbook close 2 Getting maximum normal regulation rounds on our first game, going maximum rounds possible on the second one on Shell. Hey, I, I definitely think it's a shame that we didn't get to go all the way to our third map on Villa because I know that one would have gone the distance as well. But Ryan Grand one is really important. They're just eking out exactly what they need. Quixie just taking basement by storm, making it his objective the last two times he had to attack. They're a little slower this last time. Exactly what the team needed to spearhead their way into victory. From the first part of that round, the fact that Sky got droned out, 
wasn't killed, I think really gave its way toward the fact that, well, Rio Grande might have this round because drones could be the difference and information could be the difference between winning and losing. But that is actually going to be it for this match of victory happened on that second map and unfortunately that is going to be the end of this match there is going to be one later on the b stream a nine o'clock match i believe it's louisville red versus comets da dallas i don't i don't remember exactly but treasure i are you gonna be on that b stream uh no i'll be i'll be taking my leave so this will be the last one for me for this evening, but we do have one more match, uh, like you said, here on this stream and on the mainstream, NECC underscore esports, which you probably know if you're here already. Uh, we got two more matches. I think one of them should be starting up just about right now, so there shouldn't be really any break in your action here. Uh, these two teams, Rio Grande and Central Methodist, fittingly, they actually come out of this even record, 2-2 right now, which makes so much sense with how tight this matchup mm -hmm. was right here, but that win that... Uh, Rio Grande was really needing in order to bring up uh, or fortify their record over here. Now we've hit week five. I think we're just uh, one behind on maybe reschedules or something for both of these teams. But like we said at the beginning of this stream, we're getting close to that second. Well, we're in that second half of the season now, so things are going to start getting really tight. Every single match really counts now. Yeah, so hopefully these teams will have better futures. Hopefully Rio Grande able to put together some wins. And with Central Methodist, they come back and start to put up some map victories and match victories, of course. But that is going to be it from us. Make sure you stay tuned for the later matches, both on the A stream and the B stream. But like I said before, that is all for us. I hope you have a great night.
A little bit of a shorter series to open things up and a little bit of a longer break, but we're back with our final series here on the B-Stream. I'm Tom Blake. Joined alongside me is fellow himself. We have the University of Texas at Dallas Comets Green taking on the University of Louisville Red Squad. Fellow, how do you feel coming into our second and final matchup of the evening? I'd say pretty good, especially since we're going to have two different ways of pronouncing Louisville so we can just get mad at each other the whole time. So I'm sure that'll be fun for the rest of the stream as well. But... You already mentioned the comments. Let's quickly take a look at their roster and get this show on the road ASAP since I believe we have all 10 players in the lobby just waiting on a couple more confirmations. For the side of the comments, you've got To Kill a Fiend, Texhorn, Marks, Trish, and Failure as well. I believe Failure Hero is their full name. And I haven't actually gotten the opportunity to cast these guys just yet, but looking forward to it. Well, same with me on the Louisville side. I have seen UTD Green, but Heartless, Synthetic, J Razor 67, Gangstu, and System on the board here. And I I do think coming into this, University of Louisville Red have a little bit of a disadvantage. They're coming into this one, one, and three versus UTD Greens two and two. But nonetheless, still just a single game of a difference. If Louisville Red win this, each team at two and three. And it definitely seems a little more on the concerning side that you have two consistent three to seven losses for both week number two and three. That definitely seems to me that your map selection has been on the weaker side in the first half of the regular season. But hopefully now that you have had more time to build that chemistry with your team, have more time to VOD review and learn from your mistakes, that you might be able to reevaluate where you want to go for your best of three and pick a good selection for you. And honestly, one of the reasons why that might be the reason as to you losing your own map pick is because you're going to equalizer maps, such as Oregon, for example, which if your opponent just shows up better on that day, they've got a good chance of winning because, well, everyone nowadays knows how to play on Oregon. But besides that map being played today for this best three, you've got Clubhouse before Oregon, and then afterwards you have Border. So I'd say a pretty default you know, pick and ban phase besides maybe the Border, but that's been a lot more common nowadays. Yeah, I saw Border yesterday, actually, well, casting Rainbow Six as well. So it's a, a little bit more favored in the T3 slash collegiate scene. I feel teams are a little bit more comfortable with it the more it's been in the pool. It was reworked forever and a day ago, but it's still a very good map to play in. A brief note, I do think I favor UTD Green in this matchup for two different reasons. Number one, they're coming into this with a 2-2 two, two scoreline or 2-2 two and two record. Versus, again, Louisville Reds 1 and 3. And on the other side of that, they also beat Purdue Black. So, I don't know what to tell you on that one. But Purdue Black, for all of you unfamiliar, happen to be a really good team. So, yeah. Only really one-upped by their um, big brother team of Purdue Gold. Which is like the back-to-back -back reigning champion of NECCR6. So... Pretty big shoes to fill, hence why Purdue Black is normally considered the weaker team out of the two, but with a fair grain of salt added to that. 
so far for Louisville. We've got the Jackal ban off the bat here for Clubhouse. Definitely an interesting one, I'd have to say. But if your opponents are big fans of roaming on the map, especially for a site like Church and Arsenal, you could definitely help get a lot done with that Jackal, not only forcing back the roam game at a much faster rate, but also having a lot of vertical pressure as well. And that can apply to other maps as well. So definitely not something that's horrible, but something that goes usually against the grain in terms of what you see for bans on a map like Clubhouse. Yeah, Maverick, not too out of the blue either. Yeah. Maverick was unbanned on the mainstream for the game that just finished over there. Kaid off the board, not too surprising, really trying to make sure that hatches can indeed be opened now that the Maverick is off the board. Now, albeit with the Thatcher and Impact EMPs both being available for the attacking side, Kaid isn't a requisite ban, but it also allows you to make sure, hey, we don't need these Impact EMPs should we want to get the hatches open. Final ban comes through, an unsurprising Mira. That means Valkyrie's on the board, as is the Nook. Two operators sometimes you'll see taken away on more common maps. Clubhouse, really a caveat to that conversation. Well, starting out on round number one, you've got CCTV room potentially an option here for Louisville. They were, for a brief moment, opting to maybe go into gym. But for their lineup here for this top floor bomb site, doesn't seem too horrible besides the lack of, I suppose, anti-burn. They don't have a Omai, they don't have a Jaeger. They do have the Azami, which is a great op for this site. Yeah, you can extend into Raptors for a much longer chunk of time. But it seems like for Louisville... They want to actually be more prepared for the execute rather than actually stopping the setup for that previously mentioned execute. And on a site like CCTV, if you can get that Raptors control, if you can get that flat wall opened up, which are two really common spots to get control about a decent chunk of time, that could be the round over and done with, especially if you are not in a good spot to actually stop that plant from going down. But hopefully with Louisville having another you know, evil eyes, a C4 and some smoke grenades, that should be enough to get the job done if a plant gets attempted by UTD Green. I think the main issue here for Five UTD Green left. is actually clearing out that rafters position you talked about. Because exactly. Synthetic is playing is on that Azami, you have to worry about the addition of an environment rather than, well, the normal removal of one. And adding to what is already an uncommon spot, that being the rafters, basically just easily creating continuous rotates across that top floor, it doesn't allow you to clear out that top side easily. Now Trish is playing on the Cali, so that can clear out those cube barriers fairly easily, and with very good effect without using too much utility. There's absolutely no utility, by the way, as you mentioned on the defensive go. side, to deny them opening up this flat wall. That's exactly what happens, and already, UTD Green have very easy access to the site itself. Although, to Louisville's credit, this wall tends to get opened up. Even if you want to bring out Util to deny it, it just takes a little while longer. So, not too big of a concern in the grand scheme of things. But to then cross that over to Raptors, which is already a much weaker position to hold for the defense since they don't have a Jaeger or Wamai, that could maybe help assist the offense when they get those back balls opened up with no denial. But Synthetic, going for a 10 billion IQ strat of actually not playing top Raptors and hoping no one drones him in the bottom floor of Garage, he actually nets a kill off of that and then just falls off, either through Secret or down by the oil pit hatch, or drop down, I mean, pardon, couldn't quite catch as to where exactly he went away from. But still, he gets out, can rotate away, and now Trish, probably one of your main players to cover someone as they're trying to go for that plant, is now dead. Cool system. Re-aggressing down the red stairs as well, dropping failures, they try to aggress up. Walking up metal stairs, never a silent endeavor, and well, the ash shows exactly why. Already two kills going away of Louisville, and they take very little damage off the back of its system. The only one to do so is still around that 70 HP margin, give or take. Tex has gained this rafter's control, so the site can be taken relatively quickly with no south side coverage for the defensive side. But they still have to aggress, and they still have to at least plant that bomb or plant the diffuser and they still have to worry about so much utility here for the defense notably gangsta on that valkyrie has a c4 available if they want to chuck that in the evil eyes are still on the board as are a few impacts for synthetic no simple way for utd to win this round maybe could have someone go down below as well you've got those impacts like you had mentioned but synthetic not really in a place to use them as effectively as what i had imagined good keep of placements as well to get a little bit closer really interesting off angle i hope that might find something there for the azami but speaking of finding something texhorn actually finds a kill onto heartless those evil eyes now removed but there's still so much utility here for the offense or maybe not systems already popped out both of his toxic smokes the final one almost being deployed but it's a regular smoke instead there 
comes the Nitro Cell, Yellow Ping for good confirmation, and now a 2v4 with the Comets having to recover that case. Not only that, they have to get into the site again. They do have one player on it, Texhorn trying to get that down. They have not worried about Gangsta on the flank. System will aggress and take out Texhorn, who was trying to get that hold down. Unsuccessful here for the attacking side in the first round as UTD Comets are cut away to open things up and Louisville a little bit more of a lax defense on CCTV cache, significantly less wall denial and information denial than you'd expect given the site, yet it still works in their favor and they walk away with a first round victory. And for the comments, uh, I think the main reason why they just lost that opening kill was maybe A, a lack of information and B, a lack of having someone there gun up. I'm assuming that Trish dying on that opening position was because he was overexposed by that garage door, probably using their lance to break those key barriers because that's ranged explosivity and your ash might not be in the right place to do that job instead. So you're trying to do it on the Cali roll and then a synthetic just catches you off guard. Pretty expected. Louisville doing a good job of securing that first entry kill, making sure that Raptors was really never in the pocket of Comets without the fear of either a flank or someone just shutting them down once they get to the top of those Raptors with all those long angles. And with the fact that they were live, uh, relying heavily on that anti-plant potential, that was really the main go-to since that was the only option the Comets had left and that they were down at a man disadvantage. They couldn't even play for trades all too consistently with the amount of util that Louisville had stacked up in those final 30 seconds. It was you and I casting last week, the UBC versus Barton Community College, and they played Chalet. And it was a little bit of a surprising pick to see that alley try and counter the Kiva barriers of the Azami. Yeah. And it comes through here again. Maybe we're seeing some consistency between colleges and actually divisions as well. That was over in the Legends. This week, champions the very what first division below that. But still, we're seeing similar situations, similar calls in terms of tactical decisions. I like, I like similarities between divisions, especially similarities between schools, where teams learning after one another, it overall works out in everybody's favor because the more you learn, the more you can work. So far, the Comets begin to try to work their way into Kitchen. With those cluster charges available, they could force back a lot of the defense tucked in that back towards Arsenal and maybe even get the hatch opened up too since Failure Hero does have that secondary breach and they could save the Exothermics for something a little more important in the round. Still waiting to bait out maybe a potential extra C4 perhaps. Who really knows? Mark is just inside of Nerd. I don't think the defense are aware of that. That could be a free kill if Synthetic is overexposed to that angle, but he's got plenty of Kibas to keep him safe. But Heartless cannot keep himself safe from those cluster charges coming in from up above. The opening kill still goes to the Comets. Attacking side taking the first this time around, but Marker's still not cleared out of that dirt position. Long roam still here for Jay Razor, who seemingly is being held from the billiards Attack position, and Trish bomb. actually finds the kill. The flex onto the German op, as the information is not only gained in terms of electronics, but whereabouts of opponents. And they find a follow-up here for UTD Green. Both explosives used here for the lifeline of the Zofia, as Markers will expend both of them, only to clear out the barricade itself and the barriers themselves but not all that much efficacy found out of it. Probably could've just shot open the barricade and then used it fully here on the barricade. Really getting to see a potential issue here for the comments that could be this deployable shield down main so long as the Valkyrie just takes a good time to swing off this angle and just as I called it, it goes down. Trish eliminated Synthetic, finds a kill off screen and what? wow, Gangsta with the spray down. Expecting someone to challenge the exact same angle he was looking at seconds ago. Now grants Louisville that man advantage once again and the Comets, they're really not in a position to set up for that post plant. Both attackers are so separate from one another, they might just to drop down from both Moto and Blue and just hope they win their ones. Well, tracks are dropped. Tex wants to drop, but really can't do so safely with the Toxic Babes down below. It is the final of the Toxic Babes that has been expended. System, not much they can do now in terms of utility available. The tracks are Ten still on the go. board, but they just haven't tried to aggress onto the site. Still being held from Blue. As you can see, the reposition of System through the wall. Gangsta will find a follow-up, and unfortunately, to kill a fiend will fall. She's dead, as is the rest here of this on its side even with that opener and a follow-up as well it's three kills consecutive from louisville and then two to follow up to close out the round they find up their second as that well, it didn't seem like the comments were in the position to just take a reset go catch their breath and reevaluate what they need to do in that round despite having a five on three sure you don't want to give your opponents the opportunity to once again 
uh, do the exact same thing you're attempting, which is to reset and get a chance at working some kills. But in a five on three, you could very easily Defenders play for trades and try to set up in one of the two bomb hacker. sites and just dog pile that objective to maybe get that defuse down or just kill all the opposition in that room and then go for that plant afterwards. But the comments were just still full speed ahead. Louisville were able to deny them both of bottom main control and kitchen hatch forcing your Lurk player up the gridlock over by stock and your Thermite still trying to gather information and setting up for that potential post plant to fully rotate, go down Moto into a crossfire, and then just die. So far, Louisville have been incredibly consistent on their anchor holds, but if Comets can keep up that good momentum and just take a few more seconds to reset, they could get a round win. Oh, did you just see that? I, I don't think I caught quite all of that. What, what did you... Oh, which the, oh yeah, that like nasty angle by J what by is Razor. That gross I, deployable shield. You play the brackets on the outside. I've of never the door. seen that. Yeah, that was that, that is was insane. Yep. No better okay, way to put it. Write that one down. Write that one down. <laughs> that, that will down. be on the test. <laughs> You're gonna need to write <laughs> that, that one. Will not only be on the test, but I'll, that'll be on my ranked game playlist because I'm an avid fan of Frost and also bring deployable shield. So I am a hundred percent stealing that. Thank you very much, Collegiate Rainbow Six Siege, for not only teaching me a little bit more about the game, but teaching me some free rank strats. Because there's no way anybody ever drones that and actually sees it. They do use the first lance to make sure that main jacuzzi wall is out. A follow-up impact or a follow-up. I think EMP was put down, but no, it's just so UTD Green will indeed be able to open the jacuzzi. But similar situation as I think as to what was in the previous round where I don't think they're going to be able to get through as easily as they got to go. The Thunderbird has been detected now by Fiend, still trying to gather some info on this round. Finally, the Exothermic goes off in the background. That'll be for the Jacuzzi wall, so it properly gets exposed now for the defense to worry about a new angle. We talked about the info game sometimes being a bit lacking towards the last minute. That could be another potential issue if no one checks behind that desk in Lodge as I don't think the Jaeger of Gangsta has uh, actually been confirmed yet by failure. He might just tunnel vision on Khan. That could be a huge play for Gangster later on. Oh, no. <laughs> missed. That is unfortunate. Stunned to try and guarantee, an air, guarantee area of effect in towards... I think that was either construction or oh, towards no. cash. They don't clear Gangsta, though. And because of it, he'll find two... That is just so chaotic for that attacking side. They even had a drone on it. They just didn't fully clear the back side of the desk. It's always a false sense of security established because of it. Marker's looking for a second onto the aforementioned Jaeger, who's now 7-0-0, by the way. A reverse James Bond on the defensive side as he stands. But Louisville still playing with their aggression and playing with control. I also think they've now seen the Cali, or no, the Sophia, who's aggressing and now dies. 0-0-8, but reversed job readjusting now by the Jaeger 2, assuming there's not going to be much more of a presence by Khan, so he'll go and assist with whatever info is actually active in this round. Trish able to snipe down Synthetic, still playing over by Highway, but you don't have any lances for that shield. Bathroom's still going to be a very big point of contention, not only for your sniper, but also Fiend as she has to also worry about the player who's playing close with a shotgun. One pump brings him down to such little HP, and the third will ring onto that Thermite's body. Trish now in the bomb site, trying to get active. Needs to win this gunfight, but can't do it in such close proximity against the Mossberg. Louisville take a third in a row, and they are doing fantastic so far in their clubhouse defense. You also have to feel really, really bad for Fiend because not only did she hit the first three shots, as soon as she did, 60 healing went on to the smoke because there was two Kona stations prepped just next to them. There's no way to kill that smoke. It was basically 170 HP SAS operator on the defensive side with a Mossberg at close range. You hit a headshot or you die. That's basically your options as it stands. And unfortunately, to kill a fiend, she died. Thermite fell, and UTD Green lose another round consecutive. They really just do not have an answer for Louisville's late round defenses, whether it be around utility, gun skill, or in a lot of cases, crossfires that they have to deal with. Also, I see a bandit on the board. Are we going to see wall denial this time around? I would hope so. You know, system could be an absolute giga chat and just be like, you know what? I don't really feel like using my batteries. I'm just going to run it with the MP7 and just, I don't know, maybe go like 8 0, you know, join Gangsta. That could happen. I've seen it before in my ranked games, but here, 
I'm assuming he'll opt to go in for the bandit trick, especially since there's no Maverick. Only having to deal with potentially pocket EMPs and regular Thatcher EMPs. It's definitely not a bad idea to go in for those bandit tricks, but now it's just the Ash and, well, the Lance Charge is along with a Twitch. So really, most of these operators besides the Kali are going to actually be effective in terms of dealing with that, uh, I suppose, bandit trick. So I'm not really too sure how well System can do his job here in this position, but who really knows? Maybe if the coordination isn't there for the comments, this could still be a position to take, especially since Kali is the one trying to help deal with the thermite, or pardon, deal with the bandit trick, which then breaks the thermite charges. They put down yet another battery. I do think another lance will be dedicated here. Oh, they also moved the wrong one. Another twist drone behind system means they've run out of batteries and run out of denial. They will indeed be able to get this thermite exothermic charge down, but it did take an extra 25 seconds alongside two twitch drones. So overall, in terms of trades, I feel Lou will win that utility battle. Also now, since you wanted to prioritize those lances to deal with the key buzz, that could be a little more challenging in the late round, especially now that you have lost your Ash, so one of your main soft destructors has been eliminated too. Good opening kill by Gangsta still roaming about on the first floor, and now Texhorn will maybe try to find that trade if the Valkyrie continues to linger from that position, a spray that attempted through that stage wall, but no connection onto the player in stock just yet. Nitro Cell opened up maybe to bait out the Twitch and force her to look away, and that could almost work out for the Valkyrie. Gangsta is so close now. There's no clue where Texhorn is exactly inside of stock, and they just walk past each other. But at least Gangsta here could still be pretty important in this round so long as he just does not get located here by the offense. And maybe if they tunnel vision onto Raptors, that could be a flank for Gangsta since there really is no other use for him except to, like I mentioned, go on that flank since the C4 has already been used. Markers is actually looking down there. You saw Gangsta's outline. It was turning out that Gangsta is running for the hills. Still yet to die, by the way. Wants to make sure that is still the case. Texhorn watching the top of Blue Stairs, making sure there's no easy rotate there for the American Marine. Synthetic still on this top floor. They're trying to deal with Synthetic on the top side. The information is known as to their whereabouts and Impact even there to try and do some damage. Both Impacts are unsuccessful, but it's still not kills Lynn for UTD. Final 30 seconds, they've done a whole lot of nothing since getting that wall open. Still having to find a way to execute in this round, and the opening has not been collected yet for the comments, and neither has Raptors control. Triss wants to step up, but once again, no one's there to assist the Kali. So it's a freebie by Synthetic, essentially. Still, no headway yet done by the comments. Synthetic with another just spraying down through the top position of Raptors, making a triple lining up here for the Azami, and a quad for good measure. Louisville up four to nil so far, and so far, nothing's been able to stop him either. Gotta feel really bad though for Louisville. Gangsta died. Oh my goodness, I cannot believe it. Gangsta has fallen. Feels so bad. He's Louisville now in Gangsta's around. paradise. I know. I was, know. That was really good, but I hate you. <laughs> the the way I said it. The way I said it was just was really yeah. Bad. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Is this is this the time where I request a new co-caster? Yes. It's it's for that. For that. Go go make a ticket for it. You'll maybe get it answered at a decent time. Maybe there's a lot of tickets uh, for any CC. It's, 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 it's a big it's a big discord. Yeah, we also have like so many teams playing at the exact same time. And so, so many shout games. Out the admins. Yeah. yeah, shout out the admins. Always locking things down in the background that we can't always see. And sometimes, most, at least hopefully for the broadcasts, for the games that we can't see. Because if something happens on the broadcast, then we actually do have to see it. It's never fun. But even if it does happen, which from what's happened thus far, it means one time higher season. The admins were there. So, five seconds. Super big insertion. shout out to them. Also, our production staff, unnamed gamer, our observer, and Shiro, the producer for the day. If you are familiar with them, you should be. They're around here all the time and always working hard, especially at like very late hours because they're insane Europeans that like working very late at night and early into the morning. Just big bag chasers, really. Best way to put it. Gotta respect the hustle. So, let's see if the comments can hustle up some round wins because having a 4 and 0 split currently when you're on the offense is already not a good sign but 
6-0 would be even worse in comparison. So hopefully they can bring things back to a certain extent. Triss is able to get, or Trish, sorry, is able to secure that first blood on the Jay Razor, who is still roaming over my pool table. Not much longer, though. He's dead. And the rest of the comments are now setting up to potentially maybe get stock opened up early on. It seems like maybe Failure wants to get that hatch opened up before he goes to kitchen, or... Maybe he'll just ignore that for now and instead focus on maybe working those cluster charges over by the kitchen flooring like he did last time and then trying to get the hatch opened up later on as well. Thanks uh, needing to look out. There are cluster charges being popped on their backside. C4 prepped to go up above. I don't think that one's going to land though. Failure walking straight onto it, but the blow is... No, it's not too late! They actually find the Thermite! That's an even better kill! Well, I'll be it. Fiend does fall, she's off the board. It's Failure Hero who's still alive with the cluster charges available. And notably, the secondary hard breach. They may be able to open up that hatch still. It's a real question mark though. You can see that can opener. I think it's going off up above right now. Heartless walking straight through track stingers, just casually taking eight damage a second as they move forward. Now we'll continue to move and fall. I, I, okay. I'm not gonna analyze that. Moving on from that, the Maestro no longer able to bring out their evil eyes as laser beams, just info. But the info game has been pretty good so far for Louisville, so not too big of a concern. The only issue is now you're one extra gun down, and that weapon is the all that out of all things. So could be really big trouble if the offense can play good trades, but we might just see a big play in the making here by Gangsta now dropping 11 kills overall, but doesn't expect another one by the Moto Hatch, and now it's just the smoke here to cover against that potential drop down. Texorn having enough room to do just that will eventually get himself closer towards the bomb site, breaks out the default cam, and the secondary breaching charge, the last one available now for the fuse, will go off on that triple wall to make Maybe get in the bomb site and let that defuser go down. But depending on the angle held by the smoke, he could deny that. That breach is so out in the open, but he dies to failure. Synthetic now, the only one to stand is in the opposing bomb site. Gets a red ping on the fuse. Can he win that gunfight? As of yet, no. Caught in the reload, has plenty of natural cover, but not too much time. As the defuser gets put on the ground completely, stuck in a true one versus three with so many different angles to worry about. And I think at least one attacker has now rotated into Arsenal as well. Currently, no. They actually fall back down towards the long hallway, playing a little bit more of a safer game of cat and mouse. And eventually the mouse is forced to get caught on the trap. Finally, the Comets get around after a very successful execute. I'm still very upset about the, the Maestro. You know, Heartless, they, they really should have just shot the track stingers. It makes just about as much noise as actually walking through them. There's a sound cue of not only you walking through them, but you making the sound cue of taking damage. You were basically 20 HP up against a full 100 as you walked up the stairs, and they were well aware of your position. You theirs, not so much. Louisville Defenders will lose the round because of it. I think you keep your evil eyes on the board, and notably your maestro on the board, and remove that little bit of overaggression, and you may stay in this one. Synthetic has made it to the top floor unseen. This is the most notable thing I've seen thus far, by the way, because they're on the Caviera. They've also used the silent step to get all the way up there, so absolutely no sound cues could have been heard by the UTD. Drones, uh, Attackers have located uncharacteristic bomb. operator selection, to say the very least. By the way, for all of you who are wondering, uh, it's a switch from the Azami this round on the bottom Ten floor. Left. You to you, and honestly, with the fact they've haven't bring haven't brought one thus far, and the fact that UTD Green's burning is so far thus far. I heading out to the bomb. Especially since we haven't really seen the comments clear out the top floor a single round, and they're probably gonna expect everyone to just be on the bomb site. I mean, besides comments getting the opening kill last round, literally nothing changed on how they attack. They started out by getting kitchen control, playing vertical there with the fuse, and then they go down into dirt. You have mark try to work an opening kill and then if that doesn't work then you might see a rotate out of dirt at some point or you just stick there the whole round so that complacency level here by comments might be their undoing but i think fiend just caught a whiff of jay razor that could be a potential opening kill for the comments but that secondary drone for a moment missed him but then it double backs into the top of pool table so good call back there by the gridlock trying to maybe work another opening duel against j razor funny enough and maybe having some backup with that gemini replicator as well but it just goes away so 
that element of surprise could still be there for J Razor. It's really up to the fact whether J Razor has been seen running away or whether they still think J Razor is around the strip side. They should know Jay Razor's there. Apparently, not so much. Jay will find the kill. Looking for a second as they swing on towards Markers, but Markers gets a re frag in and around it. Synthetic, I think, has been heard on the main stairs. Concussion Mine will look to guarantee it, but while well, Synthetic has run away and switched oh. to the M12, we'll find Tex. Gangsta finds a C4 on the Failure Hero. The only hard breach left over is to kill Athene's Thermite, as she needs to be able to open things up, not only for herself, but for her three and a half HP teammate of markers on the Zofia. But at that point, you still have a very tough hill to climb up because again mark is incredibly low on hp you've got three toxic smokes to worry about and a flank i mean this just seems like way too much that louisville have as options to deal with you in comparison to what you can do to counteract that and again that lack of information could be a major upset for the offense since they really have no clue where synthetic could be at this moment 50 seconds to go vertical being attempted but it's just getting shot through the flooring and so oh does God. mark he's so low on hp one bullet is all that was needed to put him on the floor bleeding out and now fiend <laughs> was waiting for mark to maybe get close enough to get that revive but gangsta still through the flooring is just rattling bullets at them eventually that confirms the kill onto the Zofia, leaving just Fiend now in a 1v3. You know why they find that kill? It's a, a black eye camera up in Kitchen they did not clear on the attacking side. You can see Jay Razor was scrolling through cameras and scrolling between the Valkyrie and the black eye cams. Gangsta, knowing that one was in dirt, the final Toxic Babe will indeed be used. This round's over, no easy way in for To Kill a Fiend. You either hold W straight through the smoke and take about 30 damage, or you hold W straight through the smoke and take 100 damage. Either way, you lose the round, and the Comets are cut away once more. Louisville don't make it 6-0, but very close at a 5-1 halftime split. Still has the same punch as a 6-0, and oh, just not as flashy, I guess. A 5-1 split is fantastic, no matter how you cut it. So, as long as Louisville just win, like, the two default rounds you tend to get, which is considered for most maps, I'd say for Clubhouse, default is like three round wins, maybe four on your attack, they should be fine. Maybe attacking Church and Arsenal could be difficult, but their lineup doesn't Defenders look too shabby to deal with that. I think the only thing they could bring more of is maybe Hard Reach, since the only thing they've got currently is the Ace, so best case scenario, they get maybe like Triple Wall opened up, and then also the Hatch and Kitchen. System now opting to go for the Thermite instead to maybe have a better presence on the Hatch, but with no Cade, why not just bring a Habana? We've seen literally no Habana so far this entire game. I, I guess I guess people are just allergic to the Type 89 and, and the Excaris charges, but I really feel like that would just get rid of any problem you would have with Hard Breach for this site in particular. Still, the main reason that Habana is not favored as much on the bottom floor by UTD Greed is uh, to kill a fiend playing around comfortability, that being the exothermic charges, the ability to also have the secondary hard breach to open up those hatches so you really don't need that Habana. Also, when you do use the exothermic charges on like the main wall, for instance, dirt, it creates, it creates a full and complete avenue of attack in rather than having a crush from time full and possible. Mm. This is true. Habana pellets are really annoying to walk through when you have like 10 seconds and people are shooting at you. I can I can concur. But J Razor, thank you for switching. And having two hard breach, which for pretty much every site on Clubhouse is, is normally the go-to for most teams, especially if you're a team that likes to cross uh, extend for clears. Synthetic. Speaking of uh, going in for separate clears, he's looking to brew up a potential lurk down from oil pit all the way into blue. That just might work. If the Comets are not aware of that and they just kind of have their backs turned all tunnel vision on this kitchen attack by Louisville, that could be massive. And since Dirt has now gotten opened up, which almost killed Heartless, but he backs out, would still have his HP left to survive. Packed. There it is. They get the impact trick done. So four wasted X Kairos there for the attacking side. Second attempt will come through. They're probably going to use just two to try and bait out that second impact. It will come through, and it is indeed baited out. It is four this time around. At least a first two to make sure there's no impact trick, and then a following up just to make sure the hatch open. I like making sure that Louisville's safe on that one. They do indeed get the hatch open as J Razor explodes. The final two X Kairos fired. 
Last 75 seconds left here in the round, and Louisville already aggressing on towards the site. Heartless in from that third position. You have control in kitchen, main stairs, all the way around through oil pit to aggress towards blue. This is a very diverse attack from Louisville, and really not something we saw at all from UTD Green. Setting up that phantom pressure too. We saw Synthetic just rotating out of oil pit and going somewhere else. I think he went down a secret. Yes, he did. I believe he was the person to maybe injure Texhorn. If not, it was the guy by dirt just catching a glimpse of that Lamai as he tried rotating back into sight. The beeper goes off, sure, but the jig was already up from the start. System now gets that confirmation on a Texhorn who was still on the floor bleeding out. Trish finds one with the pump action, but still, it's mostly Louisville to stave off a good chunk of this defensive onslaught. You've got the drop down now through the hatch j razor sticking that plant and there's good coverage so far by both heartless and synthetic in tandem leaving just failure hero having to be the hero of round number seven with this all the mows down synthetic but so low on hp it's a very difficult position to come back from and look at the passivity here by louisville they're forcing the hand of this lone comet defender to either go through the rotate or go against that long angle being held by j razor it's the ladder that gets this lone maestro kill Right through, lands. Apparently, allergies to the Type 89 are only occupied of that from UT Dallas. I brought the Repi Pen. Thank God. Yeah, well, they didn't use it in that round. They all just fell apart. Louisville do indeed walk away with the round victory. And map point already found for all of you looking at your clocks. Clocks, it is about 9.42 by the time I'm saying this on stream. This game started all of about 35 minutes ago. That's how dominant attackers this need to has locate been. and defuse as many uh, bombs as they can. We're, we're getting a possibly suspected smoke skin. Um, so we could take a look at Trish on the smoke. What is that skin? That's like an NAL skin. Yeah, that's completely legal. Um, but a really cool one actually. Um, I don't think that would matter anyways because Louisville won the round. So yeah, they, they, they just want to make sure that they can yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. pen that one in. Uh, understandably so they've got potentially another map at least to play with them so it actually might matter in the late round but uh last round it did take a long time for louisville to switch that habana which is why i made the joke everyone seems to be allergic to the type 89 and uh well we almost saw her in play again for another round but for this site you don't really need her so I think I can cut Louisville some slack. Typically, it's like the Ace and Thermite combo that you bring. You get one of the two to go to Jacuzzi, and then the other one takes the vice versa position. But usually, especially if you have something to stop those bandit batteries or what have you that can deny the wall from being opened up, if you have someone to help assist that Thermite or Ace, then you should be fine. Unless to kill a Fiend can actually bandit trick with that one battery, it definitely seems possible, unless the 50-50 gamble for her just doesn't work out, which sometimes it does. I'm usually not a fan of 50-50 gambles. I prefer my gambles to be at least mathematically advantageous. So you count usually cards. Usually it's like, I plead the fifth. <laughs> Atlantic City, please don't. I was very good at counting numbers. Nonetheless, bandit trick attempt is unsuccessful. The killer fiend is flashed off the angle. Very well coordinated on the attacking side. We, we got a note from our observer earlier on in this one when killer fiend was actually on the attacking thermite and they were attempting to be bandit trick. That to killer fiend is a very good bandit tricker. Unfortunately, not being given the opportunity because of that Louisville coordination. Also, a one for one trade with Gangsta dropping Texhorn, but Failure Hero immediately dropping the return. And that sledge being off the board, but already 15 and 5. I don't think Gangsta's too offended. And look at that position already in Logi. I mean, if Jay Razor gets a bit more aggressive, that could be a cutoff to make sure nobody else from Casher Construction can get back into the site. There's Failure getting dropped down six feet under. Jay Razor just huffing the toxic fumes in Logi, but eventually he gets away from it. And the M870 to dish out some major damage on a system. Jay Razor gets down through the wall. Could be confirmed with that pistol, and that will be matter of fact. But so separate the attackers are currently, and Synthetic wants to maybe capitalize off that, but instead goes for a smarter move of falling back and joining forces with Heartless currently on the highway position. They might need to worry about someone peeking them CC window, but so far Mark is just playing so conservative right now. They don't want to overexpose themselves to that sniper and maybe die forcing a 1v2 with to kill a fiend being in a very weak spot to play for ranged against those people hopping in from the highway window. So for now, it's pretty much just a 
I suppose a standstill, a bit of a stalemate for both teams as now with the info being gathered, Louisville can hop in, but Mark with a nasty angle all the way down from Cash is able to smoke out Heartless, leaving just Synthetic in a 1v2 with a very tough gun to accomplish that win. Does swing in and at least gain some control. Has no lances available, so A can't open up that castle barricade without 11 punches at it. But we'll try to pronely walk through this rotate and it's not even a rotate i think this round may be over having to walk through a different rotate of which is concurrently being held long range they do walk into bathroom looking for the kill on defiend but will be unsuccessful in doing so at minimum comets will be able to pick up a second and stay alive for one more well the question is where are they gonna opt to actually defend i would assume cctv because their defense wasn't the best on church but I do feel like going back to church is still not a bad call. You have to go there eventually unless you want to defend bar. And you might as well just get out, you know, that site over and out with potentially. Um, but either way, you know, it's a, it's the lesser of two evils. Really, You can't really nitpick too much about where they want to go when it's 6-2 match point. And I think their own map, correct me if I'm wrong too, because Louisville got the second map pick of the BO3. And of course, this is map number one. So unless I can't read uh, map bands, then uh, this isn't louisville's map pick. but like i mentioned cctv in play the bandit trick is still going to be attempted but so long as there is control of i would suppose bottom secret or if you can just get your zofia charges uh, through that little drone hole then you should be able to stop the bandit from doing his job and pocket emps or i guess primary emp since it's actually thatcher in play for one so a lot of potential to stop that bandit from doing their job I love the potential at a bare minimum for both sides, though. That's my real impact point at this time. UTD Green, not only A, have the ability to clear out the Bandit batteries with the Thatcher EMPs, which honestly, if I was on Louisville, right now you spawn over towards that main plat wall, and then you immediately throw those EMPs at the Bandit batteries as soon as possible. Drop two right off the bat, and try and at minimum get Bean to try and pick them up. If you can get this exothermic charge on the board as quickly as possible, you already have that advantage. I do think the Kill Fiend will have a little bit of a better shot over here towards CCTV cache, but failure is actually being pushed from stock, and I don't think they know it. Nade prep from below, Heartless finds their first kill on the game, much less the series as a whole. Second attempt, however, will not land. EMP put down, second attempt at it as well. To Kill a Fiend, I think, has been taken care of, but no! Bandit trick lands. Second attempt at it, all four bandit batteries are on the board. One is retrieved, putting it down once more, they will try, but on the wrong wall. Oh, Jay Razor picks it up in time, but I do not think they're getting this exothermic charge down unless they take care of it from that AC window. I mean, they just need somebody to go through secret. I mentioned this earlier, and if Harless had a grenade, could maybe toss it over to that wall, but there is an ADS to catch it, so not really much fruit to bear from that side of the map either, but Fiend has zero bandit batteries in her back pocket so again get somebody underneath break this castle barricade and just ash charge it open finally they do so are they prepared for the guy in swamp what they just crossed past him and mark kills both of them from lounge what was that how did the castle not hear either one of them so that happened and because of the utd green now have the advantage not only that they have a man advantage and utility still to work with. Two C4s on this defensive side. Unfortunately, no toxic babes. I don't know how Gangsta doesn't hit that shot. Excuse me? Now they'll walk in looking for another, but they miss again, switching to the bearing nine. Second attempt or third attempt, I suppose, is finally there, as a third time is indeed the charm. Heartless looking to frag out from the construction connector will not be able to find that kill. Failure creating a rotate in through this CCTV side, but the C4 from below, as Marcus is being taken care of, is also taken away. 40 seconds remains absolutely nothing that UKTD have to deny a plant other than just pure gun skill of which they have in droves apparently. They have yet to clear out anything on the site itself. Gangsta finds another looking for 18 kills to close out the map, but it's Jay Razor to steal the show and Louisville to steal Clubhouse. Well, that's a round to end out map number one if that's for sure. I mean, what? <laughs> there's no better way to describe just the chaos you can see in a game like Siege than that round right there. I mean, we saw everyone just frantically rotating down into the first floor to then try to get the plat wall opened up. And while that whole process is still happening, people just, they have no clue about it. I mean, 
Thank God for the mute over by main lobby, a uh, double door, because if not for him, that could have been wraps for the defense much sooner in that round. They still kept it fairly close after two people crossed past the castle playing over by Swamp, but then the conversion back up above, especially by Gangsta, that was a really good call to be like, you know what? I know there's two people in the bottom floor. I need to get in the building and just work a pick. And he does so relatively graceful. I mean, it was a bit of a sloppy fight with that sniper rifle, but you can't really fault the guy. He was literally like arm's length away from the bandit. So good on Louisville to still bring back that round despite losing a couple of bodies from the gecko. Actually, no, it was heartless to get the opening kill, but they then flustered a bit yeah. when trying to go back down the first floor. That's what actually happened. Yeah, it was markers to find the two follow-up kills. If they clear out that mute, yeah. the game probably ends in the next 35 seconds or so. UTD are just collapsed upon, and the round and game. And nonetheless, both indeed did occur, and in the exact same round. It was just a delay of about 35, 45 seconds or so. Yeah. It is a map win for the University of Louisville Red. UTD Comets Green will be cut away, at least in the first map. They'll move on to their opponent's map pick down a map but it's still oregon so not an uncommon map pick by any chance we'll see if it works out for them and they can force a third of border when we come back from the break
Welcome back, everybody, to NECC. We've got the return of the Comets versus Louisville to see if we're going to have that potential reverse sweep here for Comets or if Oregon is the final thing to give that 2-0 victory here for Louisville. Uh, Dan, what are your thoughts heading into the second matchup? Because I'm still a bit intrigued to see how this game's going to end. Well, map one did end 7-2. It was really off the back of just a few outliers. Gangsta popping off, I think, ended mm. with 15 kills or something in the general neighborhood of that, alongside the fact that as we head into Oregon, it's still a default map pick. Now, you're looking at the series and saying, oh, yeah, the University of Texas at Dallas, Comets Green Team, yeah, they lost their map pick. But it was Clubhouse. Everybody and their mother have played Clubhouse 40 billion times, just as they've played Oregon 40 billion times. So it's entirely possible that we do indeed see Borders a third map. That's really where the rubber will need to hit the road for Louisville, and they'll be required to pick up that map win or are forced to lose the series. Nonetheless, Oregon should still be possible. It's not out of the realm of possibility by any means for comments. Just depends on, again, how, I suppose, how comfortable you are on Oregon in comparison to your team. It really did seem, seem like a lot of stagnation by the comments on their own map pick of Clubhouse, which is definitely a bit of a concern, whereas at least for Louisville, if they were getting challenged a bit too much, they were willing to adapt their comp just slightly. So that's definitely a good note to make heading into Oregon, where a lot of adaptability is most likely needed to be made, especially if your team uh, opponents are good at countering your team. So far for operator bands, though, Nothing much has changed besides what the Comets have opted the ban for, and that being the Flores. I guess since Louisville did bring him out a couple of times, that would explain it. But other than that, he's just a great operator in general when dealing with all that shield spam, which tends to happen on a map like Oregon, specifically in that basement site, and also Kiba Barriers, which Azami was played pretty consistently last map, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see her at least once today on Oregon. Yeah, and looking at these operator bans, it's nothing out of the blue. Valkyrie being off the board, yeah, you understand that. Cade was a ban back on Clubhouse, similar reason for the ban here. Synthetic back on the Cali for the time being. I'm going to take a cursory glance at that, considering attacker, attacker repick does exist. And Louisville do start on the attacking side, because it is their map selection. But the main thing I want to bring up is the fact that Tequila Fiend is playing Tachanka. I, I'm going to get your opinions on this one, because I am intrigued. Uh, definitely, definitely very based. Uh, for Fiend, I wonder where they're going to set up with those Shamikas because uh, the biggest aspect you can have with Shamika launchers is just overall range in comparison to a Toxic Smoke. It's much easier to set yourself up in a corner and just play for long range and just start raining down fire in one specific choke point on the map and that's it for a decent amount of time. Whereas Smoke, you can be a little more versatile in that short range potential. So maybe they're trying to double stack up so they have multiple angles on lockdown since there are a lot of areas you can entry from, like basically from the exterior of the map. You know, Big Window's a good example. You could mostly consider, you know, Closet going into the site of games to be almost exterior because how close it is to the Master Balcony and Attic as well. So there's a lot of good potential for both Fiend and Trish to waste time in their own areas that they're currently defending. So interested to see where exactly they deploy both those pieces of utility for where Louisville want to attack in this round. The thing is the fact that Heartless is popping on the Nomad, the air jabs in their back pocket. I like this call, Heartless, I think underperformed in the previous map as they only found, I believe, two kills total, maybe one. I know of at least one with a nade, and that's about it. Trish is yet to be cleared out of small tower, synthetic on the outside of that. May have to be wary of that position. Attic being aggressed upon as well by the attacking side, but no real master control even attempted other than just one player on that far side of the map that being system to maybe open up the main wall. There isn't anything on the other side other than a mute jammer, of which they could just easily shoot out if they find the correct position. That's the one thing they'll have to be wary about. Also, down below this breach, if you're wondering, you can see Failure Hero on that bottom floor. That's the mute. 
trying to play maybe through a breaching hole where you control this through the floor. No, they, they don't play the position. They just try a C4 and miss. If there was a bit of better coordination, that could have been a C4 to net a kill since that flooring was soft near the double wall. But to no avail for the defensive side, you've got this cutoff being held by your window repel player of Heartless. So it's going to be a little bit easier now for Louisville to potentially isolate this lone guy in the middle of Anakton. Maybe get that first entry kill, but here comes that utility of those Shamikas to, once again, keep the offense at bay for the time being. But that's only for big window. You still have this attack, this addict attack going down for the offensive side, but it doesn't work out. Mark is able what? to find one and two with the AUG. j is there on the response and so a system to equalize but still the comments hold on as trish lands a nice shot there on a system with the shotgun they got the diffuser down as well dropping the thermite the diffusers on the floor they have to be wary about that 45 seconds left on the clock synthetic just playing on the outside jay razor does find a follow-up so the diffuser can be retrieved if required three toxic babes are still available Attackers for this defensive side if they need to be used which i think they will be trish is rotating all the way down below and this will be heard by synthetic so they'll be wary of those white stairs finding the first kill immediately swinging around looking for the second they should be able to find it but synthetic actually attempts to drop away the switch off that SMG-11, throwing out their first of three toxic babes on the defensive side, but it's still J-Razor alive in towards Kim Kid Storm. Synthetic is still alive over inside the site itself. I don't know how in the world they didn't kill the smoke right off the bat with audio cues, but, well, Trish is still, well, never mind. They were still in this, and then Synthetic just took care of it. Really shocked to see why neither the smoke or Tachanka was focusing on trying to bring out their util to stop anyone going from Addict. Uh, that definitely seemed a little interesting since that was one of the main focal points for Louisville to still win that round. It was the refrag by J Razor. It was that presence still eventually heading in from, I believe it was Master Wall at one point by the Thermite on top of that big window position too, to eventually tip the tide back in the favor of the offense Defense and i think the bigger the picture of that round two is the fact that trish altogether wasn't in a position to bring out those smoke grenades except for big window which the tachanka was already holding a position from and then trish instead just plays underneath waiting for someone to hop in but doesn't bring out their util at all during that round i think if you had maybe trish and failure either swap positions or just swap you know operators that could have been a much more successful round for the comments since it's not that big of a change in terms of style of play, except now you have someone who's a little bit closer to the site now having those toxic smokes to play with. But other than that, it was a decent hold by the comments until they ran out of utility to keep Louisville at bay. Unfortunately, just used too much of that utility early, and they didn't use a single toxic babe, by the way, because yeah, right. was playing way too far off site. I don't know exactly. why... You saw Trish playing just vacant from the premises itself. Trish does melee out the window and tries to get aggressive. Again, uh, Trish, you're playing the smoke. I don't know if you've been given the memo. Your goal is to sit on site and do nothing until they start to push. Yet, you're still sitting in small tower. Now, okay, shower hallway and backing away, but still, come on. Well, clearly you've never seen the, the Papa P roam with the smoke SMG. You never had that yeah, deployed but... on you. Poison's also a challenger league player, so he's allowed to do that. Yeah, that's up for debate. He was doing it in T3, so, you know. Maybe, maybe, you know, Papa P was trying to walk so the Comets could run. I don't know. Seems like the Comets haven't really done all too well in the full-fledged sprint. Been a bit of a trip up on round one, but hopefully they can readjust and pick themselves back up for their bootstraps heading into round number two. You've got Mark once again, just the one-man army here to deal with this attic position. So far, no one here to assist as of right now. And still having the Chanka and the smoke really begs the question why you're not wasting time in that position. Gangsta expects the aggressive play, gets that one for one, and Heartless is just in the sight. He spots the Chanka, down goes to kill a fiend. Total attic control, and now I would assume a post plant position soon to erupt too for Louisville since there really is no denial. But maybe Trish still playing. Playing underneath, failure gets shut down as well by that Ying still persisting in kids' room, and now it is only Trish once again trying to retake a smoke. I, I swear failure and Trish forgot the memo that they're playing on the opposing SAS operator. System finds the final kill, but I'm gonna gloss over this because come on. You have your mute playing on site when they can play vertical C4. You have your smoke playing off site when you cannot play vertical toxic babes. It is not an option.
by any means, nor is there much room clear here for Louisville. They do not care that you are off-site. You saw just the actual bum rush onto the site, by the way. They didn't care, and UTD Green were just not prepared for it. Akila Fiend was just completely caught off guard. Very well-placed Candela is just a sprint through big window and into the Defenders back side of Kate Storms, but you're looking at it and saying, UTD Green, you go to the exact same spot on the top floor, you hold the exact same defensive setup, and you still have the smoke off-site. Now Trish will be playing on the Vigil, so Attack playing off-site is certainly an option, and actually encouraged most of the time. But maybe that switch is a little too little too late. And this isn't to be rude at Heartless or anything, but sometimes the best strat is just to simply not care when taking a gunfight. It really felt like Heartless was just relaxed and in their element when just getting down into business with those Candelas and Ying LMG combination. And it worked like a charm. You've got Kids Control, which is one of the main points to deny a, ki uh, a big window hop in besides the vertical underneath that Trish was still holding. And that also, again, helps assist the rest of your team coming in from Attic, which that is also a main point of denial, is Kids Room heading into Attic that time. So that really was a, a big X Factor play there for Louisville. And also the fact that they only had to worry about it, the Chanka, and the smoke was still off site, and the Chanka had only popped like one or two Shemika launchers at most, I think, that round. Dropped. So again, the main focal point for the comments was still in the back line rather than in, in the limelight, I suppose, of that round. And speaking of activity here for Louisville, once again, Harless wants to lead this charge. The Gonsit gets caught by the ADS, but that does allow elbow control pretty much for free. A Gon six and some Capital Bolt were burnt up, but that was really it. Relatively decent trade if you do indeed yeah, look bad. at it. Real estate for a little bit of utility. Shot almost landing, long range from the backside of blue all the way, or backside of construction, all the way through the backside of pillar. Heartless spraying down that prisma, about 17 shots at it, will give four continuous pings towards their position, one per second. But Heartless, as that expires, he will be perfectly fine. And chill on the backside is, I, I don't think they're going to be too worried about it. They do indeed actually open up that elbow side, so decent control already gained here for Louisville. And again, they seemingly do not care about the roamers. Finally, Jay Razor seemingly worried about one, but it's only Mark. Just sitting around towards the kitchen side, holding a rotate in towards security, and Jay Razor doesn't really care. If Razor can still get the hatch and E-Box opened up too, it's not really going to matter if he dies, especially if you have that roamer does not play on the hatch itself. Heartless with the opener, good job at the Capital once again, and the trade system rings in true. Trish just drops down the laundry hatch, but a little too late to catch the guy playing by the laundry rotate. Marks as well gets active in this round, and Trish hearing the audio call by Jay Razor will mow down the Habana, leaving just System still playing by that closet position. Texhorn may be low on HP, but Mark and Trish, not really the same story for them. Still a minute to go, but you're still trapped in this one position. Immediately sprays through Trish. What a good kill onto the Vigil. Still a 1v2 though, and the comments are playing so passive and they're playing incredibly difficult angles to deal with. Although they give away one body, they don't throw out the other two, and they finally get a round win on the board much earlier in comparison to what we saw in Clubhouse. You know, they have the Habana look down the hatch instead of dropping down the stairs. You easily find the kill under the vigil, and it's a two versus two as you aggress in. I I do think that should have been a Louisville round. Nonetheless, UTD Green do indeed pick it up, and they're going back to the top floor. Here I'd go meeting kitchen or even kitchen dining better than the top floor because you've had no argument to even win the top floor, much less actually do so twice over. So that's, again, personal Defenders opinion on that one. But it, it just doesn't feel like... Louisville Red care about this top floor defense, and a lot of the times on the site itself, a lack thereof. Trish, instead of going smoke this time, is going bandit, when they have barely even aggressed onto the master wall. Failure Hero is going alibi. What are these operator switches? Hello? It's getting lost in the sauce, I think, Dan. Might need to take a step back before you end up drowning in it. I th I really thought for a second that bandit battery would stick on the um on the kid's wall. That would be a first, I think, for me personally. But I think Trish will bring out the last two for the back wall, leading an addict. Um, both these walls can get destroyed not only by the EMPs but just vertical. So it's very obtuse to want to bring out that ban uh, bandit batteries for this site. A mute would be significantly better, which is something failure here was bringing out constantly because at least you have more drone denial and still a nitro cell. 
But, you know, I digress. It, it, I, I guess it's not the worst thing you could bring for this bomb site. Really hoping Comets can bring out better emphasis on that utility. They still have the Jaeger on my combo. They still have a Tachanka. I'm just hoping they can be proactive and they don't just, you know, chipmunk all their util in their little cheeks and just never bring them out in the round, you know, because if hibernation comes around, you still have, you know, all your acorns in your mouth and it really does serve no purpose. You're not going to put them in the dirt. You just kept going down that acorn hole, didn't you? You know, it is almost the season for hibernation, so might as well, right? Don't talk about things that make me want to fall asleep. Oh, you know? I see what you did there. That was a that was a good one. You got a good chuckle uh, out of that. I have my moment every so often. Tex playing inside of Arsenal system, seemingly aware of it, looking to clear out the Jaeger. Jaeger unaware. Spray through. First time misses. Second time through the wall does indeed land. A two for nothing, two for nothing trade. Heartless, however, is down for the time being. But I think they should be able to retrieve the Ying, and they'll be perfectly fine on that attacking side. Not too worse for wear. Oh, the Ace is going to hop in. That's a really ballsy move, but it works out. No way J Razor wins that gunfight. Just now, Heartless gets revived. So, that being said, it's back to a five on two and another retake by the defense. Thankfully, failure catches J Razor before there's a trade, but Heartless just goes up army stairs and he wins his gunfight. Completely caught off guard. Only up to the bandit now to win this altercation. Confirms one kill on the system. Whips out the pistol to really seal the deal, but a uh, Ying Candela just gets rolled down to their feet and they're completely blind, completely stuck in the back of the bomb site. And now they got a retake in a 1v3. I mean, this just, this does not look good for Trish. Not too much time to work back this map control. And you have no info where Louisville have fallen back to as well in this 1v3 post plant. Again, the passivity being a really big talking point for the oh offense gosh. when they get into that <laughs> post plant position. And Heartless, I think he just did the around the globe rotation back up to big window. But hey, it got themselves a kill. So good on them. So they had three players in three completely contrasting positions, only one of whom had direct line of sight on towards the actual diffuser. They had the Cali outside, repelled not only on the direct window, but on the wall next to it that goes directly to the bottom of white window. Second player was in kids' dorms, locking down the rotation that would come across Defender the white stairs bomb. hallway straight across the dorm's main hall callout. And then Heartless was like, I'm going to run around the map. And then did so towards the double window balcony and then finds the kill because unfortunately to kill a fiend took a little bit too long on their re uh, on their retake but in all fairness to them well she not only had to retake the site but find three different players in three completely unknown positions because there was absolutely no information left over for the, for the defensive side talk about being between a rock a hard place and i suppose an acorn at this point mm. Since we're on the subject of hibernation <laughs> it seems like the comets for a moment have a fall into sleep almost here on Oregon and for them it's kind of the same storyline that we mentioned on Clubhouse of currently their first half split doesn't really look good on paper Louisville already have three round wins on the attack that is considered by some still to be a statistic anomaly for this map although three three halves in general have become a lot more you know mundane than what they used to be because of attacker repick and a lot more, you know, ops being favored on the offensive side nowadays. But for you, for the Comets options, they don't have many left. They can maybe go back to basement on round six, and now they're playing a tertiary bomb site pick, which is probably better than kids since they've lost that bomb site every single round. But again, you can just tell how limited their options are on their opponent's map pick, and that just might be the final nail in the coffin for them, especially if they don't win another round win in this first half. Thanks so already opening things up. I do believe they've seen Tex. Tex just so oh. delayed on the look. Oh it's my tough. goodness. Adding insult to injury as they're just chilling, relaxing, and dead. Now trying to clear out this top floor. It's the smoke playing above. This is not an unorthodox decision playing vertically as a smoke, at least down below. But Trish is completely taken care of. Apparently, Texhorn decided it was optional to communicate to their teammate. There was indeed attic control gained by Louisville. And because of it, UTD Green have lost already top floor control, and it's been 75. Five seconds and now the Jackers offense can just freely run. play vertical Jackers oh and they still have a fuse yeah comments they gotta run for the hills tuck tail and get out of dodge thankfully fiend has not received 
any, I suppose, destruction towards their position from those fuse charges, but really it's only a matter of time before they either get pushed out from somewhere else with some verticality or by those fuse pucks once again. 70 seconds to go now overall on the board for Louisville, and it's a triangular formation here by the comments. If the offense had info that there is somebody or nobody by meeting, they could push in from that one direction, maybe get the back kitchen wall Super opened nice. up, but... I don't think they'll need it at this point. It's another 5v2, and really only a matter of time before the offense realize where these last two defenders are. Well, hey, each one finds a kill. To kill a fiend is being held from above, though. There's still that vertical angle being locked down. To kill a fiend, still have to worry about that. They do indeed get the dining wall open. Heartless will jump out of that position, as they are safe for the time being. But it's still Louisville locking down a post-plant scenario. Synthetic seemingly misses every shot other than one, sending markers down to only about 55 HP. The swing into the shower hallway, however, is safe for the time being for that bandit. Second attempt, however, for Heartless will find the kill as they pick up another on this map. Picking up right where they left off in terms of kills to close out the previous map, it's kills to close out this round. I believe six now for Heartless as they continue to frag out here on Oregon, and Louisville continue to win. Seems like they have the recipe for success. Wonder if it has any acorns included. Since we're going to oh keep gosh. that ball rolling. I'm not going to stop, you know. We got we to keep what things you, creative one way or another. What are you, beating a dead squirrel? <laughs> Chipmunk, <laughs> preferably, since that was the first point of reference. But I like, I like the enthusiasm. A for effort. And probably like B++ minus plus for execution there. Let's wonder... How Louisville are going to execute in round number six, probably the same way they did last time. This bomb site was in play, which is probably starting out in blue bunker, getting elbow control, and then figuring out what to do next after that, which probably will consist of like getting, you know, e-box opened up and then executing from back stairs, you know, the very bland way of attacking this bomb site. Since their lineup hasn't really changed, besides there is now an ace rather than Habana, but I think they even had an ace last time this site was in play too, so... Just no extra hard breach, but, you know, remaining. if they work enough picks in the early round, maybe that top floor presence is just not going to be a factor for Attackers them, but with their last off. second change up, maybe they'll want to do a little bit more of a roam clear, but I doubt it based off their spawns. No, Louisville are going to employ the old, oh yeah, we're going to gain construction and blue control again, and then we're going to win the round like we have, well, 80% of the time already in this half. J Razor takes a decent bit of damage right off the rip. It, damage from the armory hallway. A little bit of a spawn peak attempt. No kill down by Trish. Second attempt now towards main stairs or the main door in towards the building. Won't be able to find anything. I do believe they're going to clear out that vigil shoot sooner rather than later. That or just completely circumvent his position and decide to move on entirely. Seems like Louisville are trying to stuff up on that information before they eventually go bad. So far not noticing any of those rumors up above. They now work their way down through back stairs. Jay Razor with the lion scan and oh no Texorn! He had the upper hand there with the timing of that swing but he still loses the gunfight. Jay Razor now with a minute only burned has pillar control but just as fast as he gained it, he loses it by the hands of Failure Hero. Still, a major opening spotted by the offense. They could still take Pillar, and they do, just like that. By a snap of a finger, System is now in the bomb site, and Heartless is not too far behind him. But look at Fiend's position. That could be a massive flank. She's in such a good spot to kill Heartless, but no! Misses some vital shots. Thankfully, Failure there is once again the hero of this round. The Diffuser now dropped on the ground, and Fiend begins to rotate once again but currently still lies in wait, mostly by elbow. Oh, and Synthetics actually accidentally shot out that Prisma, so the information as to the whereabouts of the Finca is certainly known. Trish is rotating up, but seemingly they're aware of this on the attacking side. Looking around towards Z for the aggression of that Vigil, the shot's coming through, but they're not landing, so with both players looking in the exact same direction, Louisville, I feel, pushed a little bit too quickly on that one. They had a lot of early control, but decided to try and hold W and pull the trigger without the requisite information to really pull out the round, and UTD Green making this a 4-2 defensive path isn't the worst thing in the world, but, I mean, eh, could have been better. And, well, now with Synthetic left alone, it's almost a certainty to be 4-2, and I do not think they're going to clear out Freezer. Surely they don't win this 1v4, right? There's 30 seconds, no info, there's a guy still Freezer tucked behind the sink. They swing outward, 
almost a kill for synthetic now dealing with the guy back in highway the readjustment on the vigil doesn't work out and the comets like you mentioned at least they get two round wins under their belt but now moving on to the offensive side of things i i really can't say confidently that we're gonna see all too much improvement in terms of their round scoring i, I think the bigger issue is just that coordination and general positioning of oneself a majority of these rounds here by the comments i think the only person there more specifically on that round that did an incredible job of positioning constantly there was failure hero besides that that could have been a round win for louisville easily especially since fiend missed that opportunity of killing the person covering that plant originally that being heartless honestly still think louisville should have won the round but they just went in too quickly and didn't fully clear out at least the bottom floor. You don't have to clear out the room. That is not needed. If you completely circumvent the room like they did, you can move on towards the site specifically. But not clearing out the full bottom floor and still leaving yourself aware you should have flank while still having that gridlock available but not using the track stingers in the correct positions means unfortunately Louisville will lose the round uh, I, you, You're making me say Louisville and I hate it. I hate it. Uh, nonetheless, Louisville Red will lose the round, and if you can locate the bomb. Yeah, Louisville doing a good job so far, and now we alternate how we pronounce it. So, chat's gonna be really wilding. Uh, mostly bait because he's the main guy chirping up so far. Good to have some activity here in the B stream after a very long day of siege gameplay. Appreciate Seems that. like for Louisville, yeah, that's a good point. Louisville having a very different dynamic on how they defend their rounds, having a very extensive roam presence. I might net them some early opportunities. Oh yeah, J-Ray is just getting active in this round, but he's completely spotted by the UAV outside, locating any hostiles exiting the building. So off of that info, you've got failure with the entry kill, the alibi now gone, and a big amount of safety can lead your way over to Attic. And thankfully, with neither the Sledge or Maverick dying, they can still get that wall opened up too. We're going based off of Call of Duty technicalities, wouldn't that be a VTOL considering it's continuous pings as to direct location rather than... Hmm. Could be an advanced pings. UAV. Oh, no, that one's still pinging, though. It's just a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, you could call it that. That's true. I don't know. Anyway, we'll move on. VTOL or not, it was still information. It was still an opening kill for UTD. They pick up that burst, and Jay Razor's fragging ability off the board early is a big advantage here for UTD to work with. Nade prepped up first time around, will miss, so the Mute Jammer's still on the board. I don't think Texhorn is aware of it either. A C4 thrown through, I don't know if that's going to land at all. I believe it was prepped from below. Trish takes out Heartless after placing down the C4, but, well, Heartless can't blow it up, so they don't even have to take it out. Are we going to actually push up Army Stairs, though? That's the bigger question, because if they don't, Gangster could still have a lot of success playing over by Trophy Room. It's currently waiting for someone to recontest this angle. A Selma deploy, but it hits the pot, the back of the door frame, so the shield remains intact for the time being. Info as well for the top of Armory, but not the actual staircase itself, despite that deployable or that a regular default cam being up and alive. Ganks are still wasting a good chunk of time, but with that wall still being opened up, there is an entryway for the offense. But at the very least, they can still deny Attic for now since the smoke range is still active, but that was the very last one there for system. So things might get very dicey for the defense rather soon. Every single bit of utility other than a single Kiva barrier has been expended for the defensive side. Synthetic now having that torn away from them at no fault of their own, being flanked from behind, finding that kill. A swing for a second system will be taken away. Gangsta on a one versus three from a one versus four. Swings away from Texhorn at the worst time. And the Comets make it a one round game. They pull it back from four, one down, and in the blink of two rounds and two successful ones at that, UTD have brought it back, just a single one between them and tying us up. And for the comments in that round, it was just good on them for punishing Louisville for being so aggressive on that round. You saw a run out off the bat, and that by J-Razor did not work out in the slightest. So that's the opening kill for the comments. And then the same thing happens to Heartless, except just across the map. He's at the bottom of Armory Attack Stairs, just sitting the there, not even attempting to fall back, I think, at 1.2. And then he dies as well. So there's your five on three, and you can just kind of play with bodies still just, you know, multiplying where you're pushing in from at that point. You can pretty much just play 2v1 gunfights wherever you want to push from. 
And that is exactly what happened. You had two in Addict, two by the Master Wall, and then you had one guy lurking up army. So basically helping the other two people by Master. So Comet's just not overcomplicating the advantage they had. Made it for a very clean round win. I hope to see more of that moving forward, but for Louisville, I couldn't imagine they play as aggressive as they do, or at least as aggressive without a fallback plan. Because again, Louisville just kind of ran at their opponents and were just asking to get shot at that point. Still a very odd round to look back on, nonetheless. Gangsta apparently not caring about your opinion, still looking to get aggressive in towards construction, actually does indeed back away. There's a Yokai drone there for some information, as the Jaeger can play around it, should they choose to do so. Marker's drone in will at minimum gain a cursory glance for the attacking side to try and gain anything they can. Gangsta, a gamble spray, will not land, but... That's a lot of early information for the attack. With those drones coming through, they find out that there's a, at minimum a Jaeger, a shield, an ADS to work off of alongside dirt control as well. This is really good for UTD. Well, yeah, they lose the drone. They still have the info to play off of. Well, the comments still trying to get some control over by Blue Bunker as well. One explosive lifeline gets deployed to break down that one shield by barrel doorway. Now Gangsta falls back into a pocket close to pillar. To maybe help assist system so he's not completely by himself in this area but if that hatch gets opened up gangsta might need to fall back into pillar the excyrus charge will go off and it's only a matter of time before that eventual move has to be called by the jaeger to then rotate once again but so far for louisville at least they haven't lost any bodies and then i jinx system i am so sorry but oh no don't melee him. Oh, he gets the knife kill on Trish. Oh, and he almost finds no another way. one. Where's the comms for this? There's no way the Alibi finds a third. Thank God Fiend just barely wins that gunfight. But still, that's a massive what? kill for her. That could have been wraps for the offense if, if every single kill was found by that Alibi. Uh, honestly, it almost is. If it's failure to fall there instead of markers to make it a two versus two, this game's or this map is probably done and dusted. It becomes 5-3. Louisville win the bottom floor. It can go back to really any site they choose. A reswing towards Freezer does not land there for failure. So at minimum, they still have something to work around. But there is a flank established around the dirt side, and to kill a fiend is given away their whereabouts with a banshee ever so slightly popping at the top of blue stairs. They will attempt to aggress all the way towards the top of main, of which may be heard by the attacking side. This is not looking good for the 3 HP support of UTD. 40 seconds to work this play, however you may choose. But the options do seem very limited. Both default cams still up in 30 seconds. That's a little jarring of a perspective, but that might cost Fiend's life since they know where she's trying to push in from and the barricades are still intact. Yeah, th there's no better way to slice it. This round just sucks for Fiend because she is in such an unwinnable position. Has to rotate back down a staircase. Such a loud audio call. And Louisville, they're already aware that's going to be the main intention for this Habana. And they just set up to deny it. A Banshee for good measure too. And Synthetic with the confirmation. Louisville now up five rounds, I believe, in a five to three split currently going in around nine. And I think the biggest reason for the Comet's failure there was just the lack of i don't know communication and information more specifically too they just they had no idea jay razor was still in t3 and then they didn't calm where he was or nobody listened to the calm that was given by the alibi that just died or ayana that just died to the alibi pardon it's still Louisville with that round victory and now a two round lead once yeah. more. Going back a couple of rounds, I do want to uh, correct myself. Uh, ever so kind was the unnamed gamer. He said VTOL has lethality. He was correct. It is an orbital VSAT. That was the continuous uh, information to somebody's whereabouts instead of a UAV or anything. It was uh, at least back in Black Ops 2, which I know I think you play a whole lot. It was a UAV, a counter UAV, which is basically the complete opposite for the opposing team, and an orbital VSAT. For all of you wondering about the uh, run around like a, like a chicken with your head cut off version of Rainbow Six Siege, there you go. The good old days. God, that was still like my squeaker age of life. Oh, there were there were a lot of uh, a lot of. Uh, What's the term that I would want to use for that? There was a lot of hostility based on my age and sound. 
Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. Good times, though. Builds character, I guess you could call it. And uh, this spawn peak might build some character for UTD Green, as they might be well prepared for this angle next time they lock in on Oregon. But so far, no one's actually peaked the Rook. Oh, we might just catch a oh, glimpse no. of this, actually, though. Gangster is refusing to lead this position. A couple shots oh. ring out, but I think they all just hit the windshield of that van. So thankfully, there's enough coverage there by the Comets to still stay alive and not lose any health in that position. And now dawning on to the opposite side of the map, you've got J Razor still roaming close to Green Hall slash uh, Big Tower. That could maybe net a kill, especially if both the if both the Sledge and Maverick are distracted. But I don't think failure is. They know that J Razor down below. The swing from J Razor still getting aggressive, oh. still finds a kill. Why not? Has absolutely no information as to failure hero's position, yet still finds the opener. And the alibi picks up up that first kill again. Gang still looking down the vertical angle towards main, almost actually sees the legs of the Thermite. Second attempt at a round towards the Ayana will miss as well. You're still looking at UTD Green though with that disadvantage right off the rip. They lose half or actually a third of their nades considering they have Trish on the nook. And oh my goodness, system is just very close. J Razor behind is actually being baited in, but it doesn't work. Markers is aware of it and actually finds the kill because of it. Almost actually takes away System's head as well, but System would be lucky to drop away their life. J Razor, not so much. Markers still in this one. Still it's gonna take a very long time to get this wall opened up and no grenades to help deal with a shield that could potentially be there. It's only the flashbangs to force back the smoke. And honestly, he can just waste the Maverick's Yuta with his own primary gadget of those toxic smokes. But at the moment, you've got the rest of the Comets trying to work their way from the first floor creeping up white and then the main breach by Fiend. But that lurk so far leading by Texhorn does not work out. Trish is still alive on the nook. But there's a Kiba to block her from getting past white and a flank by Heartless as well. Perfectly timed onto the isolated nook, now leaving both Fiend and Mark so far away from one another. Basically on two opposite islands, just hoping they can win their separate one-for-ones, but they're not really in a position to do that. You've got somebody in Trophy, another person from top white. There's no safe entryway for the Thermite. Then you go back to Mark, and there's still toxic gas keeping him at bay. The SMG to spray him down. There's tons of holes left in his body at this point. And Fiend, in a desperation attempt, will try to get this diffuser on the ground, or at the very least, bait it. There goes one impact grenade to make a proper rotation, and System just simply goes in for the kill, and Louisville, off of that, gets series point. System actually saw the barrel but didn't know it and then swings after fully seeing the outline of the thermite. Louisville uh, published their new esports program and with it they bring in a new class. It is How to Flank 101. The main subject points, find kills, delay time, and be a nuisance. They live up to that 2AT, and UTG Green die and fall because of it. Another round loss there for the Comets attack. They now face three consecutive match and series points just to force overtime, and that overtime is just putting them in a position to try and force border before they actually have an opportunity to win this series. There's a long road between the Comets and picking up this series. I will say, uh, for the Comets, Definitely a fan of the Nomad pick. It's, it's They're gonna the have comets. There's no N. Did I say an N on accident? Saying comets for like a map and a half. Oh, I've been probably like, like just uh. You, why didn't you tell me earlier? I I, I didn't I know you were saying it. That I time misspeak. You say it. Oh, I misspeak with little stuff like that all the time. It's like the worst habit I have ever, and I have never in my like two years of casting have been able to fix that. That's just like a personal issue I have. And I feel very betrayed by you now, Dan. So for the Comets, not Mets. Oh, that's that's probably why They're I messed it up. I have, to, I have to over enunciate the M. That's probably why I messed it up. So for the Comets, uh, I apologize. They're not from New York. All right, well, um, <laughs> hey, it's the same color orange, man. It's it's like they're asking for it, you know. Anyways, they're asking to not get flanked at this point because now they have a Nomad and a Zero. So hopefully they can uh, not get shot in the back by J-Razor. But if that were to happen, I'd be very shocked. Especially since, you know, they, they have stuff to deny them. Ugh. 
That, that gave me a giggle. I appreciate it. Thank you. The Okai should be taken out. That actually makes it up the attic stairs safely. I don't know how that happens. But nonetheless, it did. Heartless still in this one. Gangsta still at the top of T3. I don't know if they've been cleared out of position just yet. That's a concern. Also, a brief note for all of you who are unfamiliar, there was some maintenance at 9 in the morning on the East Coast for all PC players. Uh, Rook now gives you self-res alongside the extra HP for all of you wondering what some of the changes were. That's at least one of them. Well, not when you're dead. So Synthetic's not going to be uh, the first wielder of that. Oh, there's there's no chance. Yeah, J Razor's caught in the reload, out in the open, overexposed. Trish there to punish the Comets, actually. That's how uh, a name told me I should pronounce it. So I guess I'll just go with that since there's going to be probably a handful of rounds left. And there's a retake by Louisville. Working two picks their way. Mark there on the response, eventually onto Gangsta. Someone who's been a little more quiet on this game in comparison to the last map, but at least the rest of his squad is picking up the pace. Heartless finds a kill into Trish, and now your top fraggers, essentially, of System and Heartless are the only two to stand, but against Mark and Tex, could be a little more doable in this predicament. 50 seconds to go, a better angle being established by Heartless, and now the execute might be attempted by this kitchen doorway, but there's a toxic smoke grenade to keep them at distance for the time being, just giving more time for the defense to work these kills, and wow, that's just siege timing in a nutshell. Mark looks away at the perfect moment for Heartless to swing by stage, and now Texhorn is the last hope for the Comets. They do still have two secondary breaches available alongside the two Argus cameras and 30 seconds to work with. They have to not only grab the diffuser, but either find two kills or try and get that diffuser down in that 20 seconds of time. They swing, they drop 60 HP before doing so because of the toxic babes between them and the two remaining members of Louisville Red, and Louisville will take the series. 7-3 here on Oregon, ever so clean to close things out. 7-2 on Clubhouse, similar situation there. And a 2-0 series victory for the team from Kentucky. And a well-needed win at that too, because again, we're moving towards the, the latter half of the regular season. So you're only going to have like a handful more games to play. If you want to make it to the playoffs in your division, you're going to need to probably have, you know, I'd say probably between like four to five wins total. So now that the uh, now that the commits have lost that game and you had Louisville winning it, they, you know, they stack up their chances a little bit more. We might see either two of these teams actually make it to playoffs because they still have two wins in their pocket. So overall, not really at the bottom of the barrel, but still they have a lot of time to continue and improve, which I'm really hoping for, especially for the commits, since their performance here on default maps. Just didn't look good today. You know, it happens. You know, you have bad games. I am actually interested to see, though, what they would look like on, on Orthodox maps like Skyscraper, like Theme Park, maybe Border as well, because those maps don't get picked anywhere near as often, especially in Collegiate. But, you know, if we did go to map three, you might have seen one of those three maps I just mentioned. But, you know, today we didn't get that chance, sadly. Unfortunately, it did not happen, but that's it for yep. the B stream. Two different two zeros on the day. And this one, a 7 2 on Clubhouse and a 7 3 win on Oregon means Louisville pick up the series 2 0. But if you're still looking for some more Oregon action, the mainstream still going will be for a little while. It's there in map one in the Legends Conference. It's Illinois State taking on the University of British Columbia on that stream. And then both streams will be right back here tomorrow with some League of Legends action for all of you MOBA fans. Stick around for that. Start around 5 6. 6, 7 p.m. give or take depending on the stream hopefully we will see you then but for the time being that is all we have for you i've been time to like that right there's been fellow we've had unnamed and shiro in the background locking things down as per usual from across yeah. the pond ever so thankful for them as they continue to support from behind we appreciate it and we'll see you tomorrow